You There's can share no it. better thing anybody can say to us than watching the TV show, not knowing who we are, but coming up to us and saying, thank you for representing Hawaii in a way that like you guys do it so well. That's yeah. the biggest compliment. Not you make beautiful houses, not all this other stuff. Yeah. It's that. And I'm like, that's the biggest, most meaningful compliment anybody could share. 100%. So. Well, welcome to uh, Real Hawaii Talk. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to announce that uh, I'm going to be doing a spinoff from Real Hawaii Talk and it's going to be uh, called Aloha Wealth and Wisdom. Mm. Nice. Um, and I've come to find that Real Hawaii Talk tends to be about the things that we're dealing with in Hawaii. Mm. Um, a lot of the, maybe the hardships and the history and the stories behind it. And that seems to be a little bit more on the darker side of things, right? Mm. So what's what's the light at the end of the tunnel where mm. that's where Aloha Wealth and Wisdom will kind of kick in? Like who's who has the Aloha to share mm. the wisdom and the wealth of knowledge that they have? So good. Yeah, so, I love that's that. That's so good. Super yeah. cool. Yeah, thank cool. you, thank you. Yeah. And thank you for allowing me to sit and pick your brains and Finally, talk Finally, right? <laughs> so it's been a long time coming. It has, but you know what? I think, <laughs> I think that's worth the wait because now, I am talking to Hawaii's new real estate sweethearts. Before, I was just talking to Kamahai and Tristan. <laughs> True. I True. mean, thank, right? you for, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, still Kamahai and Tristan, and, and a lot of the things that I like to talk about are uh, a lot deeper than just the surface of who you guys are on TV or in the meetups and all right. that stuff. So yeah. uh, it's a pleasure to actually get to sit down and talk with you guys. Undivided attention. We're excited. We're here for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All uh, here we're for we're it. super excited to talk stories. So for sure. awesome. So I wrote this little intro. Uh, Kamohai and Tristan Kalama. Whether you know it or not, you guys are Hawaii's real estate sweethearts. The one thing that I believe that you do as a power couple better than make dilapidated homes beautiful again is your uplifting of your family, your friends, and now the whole nation of Hawaii. You represent Hawaii in the best way possible. I'm gonna cry. I know, that's heavy. <laughs> I know. It, and I don't know if, I think you know, uh, and I, I get these intuitions of people, personalities and feelings and stuff. I'm kind of an empath when it comes to that stuff, but I believe that you guys know the responsibility and the gravity of the, the situation that you're in. And the situation sounds maybe negative, but you guys are in a very good situation. Mm. And, and like with everything Hawaii, you make it to that next stage, you have all of Hawaii supporting you. Wow. Whether it's American Idol, whether it's, you know, all these things. Mm -hmm. Anytime anybody from here makes it big, you've got the whole Hawaii Islands behind you, supporting you. That means everything. Yeah, like that literally everything. everything. And yeah. you're right, because when we got started just in the, the TV world, for mm -hmm. sure, we sat down and, and talked for a really long time uh, about if it's something that we would even want to do because of the immense responsibility that we knew we were going to have to bear and have, right? Yeah. Uh, and so what means a lot is hearing that from someone that we know, like, and trust, a mm -hmm. friend, uh, that, you know, it's coming off that way. Yeah. Uh, and it's crazy because we we literally just flew back from I Hilo. I was just going to share that story. Yeah, you There's can share no it. There's no better thing anybody can say to us than watching the TV show, not knowing who we are, but coming up to us and saying, thank you for representing Hawaii in a way that like you guys do it so well. That's yeah. the biggest compliment. Not you make beautiful houses, not all this other stuff. Yeah. It's that. And I'm like, that's the biggest, most meaningful compliment anybody could share. 100%. So, yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. And it that is me just putting into words how I, I feel when I'm around you guys and the energy that you guys give off. And I know that's the same reason why everybody flocks to your meetups. Everybody's showing up to turn the TV on because the episode's about to start. Mm -hmm. Like you guys, you've already given that off into the community. Um, and, and, and everybody knows it and feels it. And um, so 
I got a couple of weird questions on here that I want to ask. Just to oh, kind, let's kind get of weird. enjoy. Let's, let's get weird, dude. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna get the let's fun, get the fun stuff out of the way first. Yeah. Um, and and I'll try to make them all kind of yeah. make sense in the route. But yeah. on one of the episodes, I think it was number two. Mm-hmm. You're deathly allergic to bees. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so how did you feel? Because my son is, I mean, allergic to everything. And so mm-hmm. I, I kind of get that, that carrying an EpiPen around. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, that's everyday life. You don't realize something is that deadly and can kind of just kind of, you know. Yeah. But how, how did you feel putting on that suit when you guys were actually relocated and you're at the bee farm seeing all that stuff? Like, you seem cool on camera, Dude, but. I was way more nervous than he was. It, which is true. When he which takes it so lightly, and I'm like, bro, I don't, if you get stung, we have to literally, I have to rush you to the hospital. Like, yeah. this is not a joke, you know? Yeah. Your mom is also allergic to bees. Luckily, and, my, and she's exactly the same way as I am. Like, <laughs> about I it. it. Very yes, laissez-faire. Yes, yes. Just, nonchalant. <laughs> and I think that's what I would say. I think it comes back to, to my, my parents and my mom and what I saw growing up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, to be completely transparent and honest, I was me when I was, when I was doing that scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and I think everybody <laughs> around me is always the more worried. They're more oh, worried yeah. about it than you are. Yes, yes way more worried absolutely. about it than I am. But uh, my mom is deathly allergic, carries an EpiPen. Every, mm-hmm. like, she mm-hmm. gets stung, we have to go to the hospital right yeah. away. Yeah. And so I grew up with that, you know, and it just kind of became more normal and more normal. But my mom's always taught me, my dad too, that um, obviously we can't, we can't live with fear. Yeah, right? you can't with stop living fear. because of it. You can't yeah. stop no, living. Not yeah. at all. I was um, definitely more nervous than you were the, <laughs> in both scenes where there's <laughs> active bees flying and then we're literally putting ourselves in a situation where there's hundreds of thousands of bees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is crazy. Man. I See, sometimes it takes me to be asked a question like that. To really think about to it. To really like take a step back mm-hmm. and think about some of the crazy shit. I, I, I mean, the severity in. of the situation is kind of real, right? Yeah. Because what happens if half of the dynamic duel is stung by a bee and... Yeah. Everything stops. Right. Everything gotta, stops. Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, the behind the scenes on that one would have been crazy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they would have probably made a I mean, whole I thing see, out of oh, it. Yeah. I want to make sure you're okay first, but yeah. what did your swollen face look like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Here we yeah. are at the actual hospital because he got stung by a bee. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. I never, I'm, man, you know what it also does is it makes me think about just how I am in general, mm-hmm. right? And I think that that in general, I'm very- He is, he's very even keel. Very even keel, no matter stable. what situation mm-hmm. that I'm in, yeah. which has been both a benefit and a detriment to me. I think it can be a blessing and a curse, right? Because I, when things get super hard, and and like every all the shit's hitting the fan. The moment you need to be calm and hold yeah. it together. Yeah. Right. But I, I can be I, I don't go down into a deep, dark place in that situation. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, we get like a massive win. I don't get elevated to he a point where. He doesn't feel the high of that. Right. right. He doesn't and get so, to enjoy it as much as it should be enjoyed. A hundred percent. Um, so I think it's helped me a lot in business. I, I always talk to people. We're big proponents of like mentors and education, right? And one of the things they they always talk about is how you have to be able to not have the super, super high highs, mm-hmm. but also not have the super, super low yeah. lows, yeah. right? Because yeah. you're constantly going to be on a roller coaster. Um, you want to keep so. your wavelengths shorter. A hundred percent. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm the opposite. Of that. I was gonna say because if he's even keel all the time, you yeah. must be off the cup. My superpower <laughs> is like, I'm the opposite. I am. <laughs> my superpower is my emotion. I'm a very emotional creature, and that again has its positive and its negative. Mm-hmm. So when I'm able to feel the real highs, and I'm also able to feel the real lows. So I think we balance each other out. So if I'm low, he's pulling me up to be um, yeah. more stable if i'm high i can help him come up and be like no like let's enjoy this shit you know what i mean so we balance each other out but i think um that's the only way it works (laughs) can you imagine if we're both like oh yeah you're gonna be where we're at for sure your productivity your success rate would be completely different yeah right right that's what um what sign are you guys 
I'm a bull. I'm a Taurus. Figures. Virgo. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in the show, there was a, a also a section. We, oh, no. Was it a short? It might have been a clip. You guys are nine years apart? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so tell me how you robbed that cradle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it did happen. It did <laughs> happen. Did this you wait till after high school? Or? <laughs> yeah. It's much when, later when on in life. It, when you're later in life, that, that gap doesn't seem as bad. It doesn't. <laughs> no. Yeah, it now, doesn't. No. we try not to think about when I was in high school. You can't go back that far. <laughs> you can't go back that far. You can't like think that, about that. That is not, not good. But. Well, what's crazy is that we're both from the east side. We know a lot of the same people, but because of our age difference, we never ran in the same circles. We yeah. didn't know each other. And it was probably for the best because we both met each other, I think, exactly when God intended us to right meet time. each other. Yeah, 100%. Because he had gone through stuff that he had gone through. I had gone through stuff I needed to go through. And we met at a place and time where we were ready for each other, you know, yeah. where we were ready to show each other the love that we both wanted. We were ready to actually, thank God you didn't have kids. Because I don't know, and Thank I didn't God have you kids. didn't have kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, we, we were That's ready. Rare, yeah, it's right? So it's rare. rare. Because we I, I mean, we met when I was 30, 31. 31. I'm 31 like, years old. But thank God, like we were ready in a place to have kids. Like it was just. Everything's in God's timing. It was right? divine. Uh, it, was it was divine totally intervention. Divine. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I think the the first date that we went on was more of an interview Absolutely. than a date. Like we we both sat down. It should be though, right? Yes. 100%, yeah. it should yes. be. When and you think missing, back to it, yeah. but. Uh, we, but we both knew what, what we wanted and where we wanted to go. And I think both of us were just checking in with each other to see if we were gonna be on the same path. Right. Like it, and I think it is very important to do that on a on a, even a first date. You know yeah. what I yeah. mean? So any type of relationship. I, yeah, and I think yeah. that it usually stops with like a physical attraction, but it needs to go a layer layers deeper than that. The physical attraction is what draws two people initially together. a lot of the time together. But what but holds the, you together is different. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And literally, he tried to impress me on our first date by taking me to this place that I was very much already a part of. So that was funny. That was <laughs> he thought, he thought He's like, he was, let me show you a little secret brings yeah, to my world yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh no i've been hilarious. coming here since i was like five um and then it was just an interview honestly but it was very but it still was so natural yeah, yeah. how'd you guys meet we met through my mother actually yeah. believe it or not yeah so i was in graduate school and i was getting my practicum for mental health counseling and i was like mom can i come do hours over you know and work for you mm -hmm. uh, be easy on me you know and she's like okay and he worked there and my mom was his boss and so i would come in at night or you know later in the afternoon i would sit at her desk i would do whatever she told me to do and his desk was right across from my mom so we would just i, I literally sat we would just stare at each other yeah right here and then mom was across the way from me and the thing is is like we had formed a really good relationship with each other she she knew my family she knew my work ethic because i worked for her you yeah, know what i mean yeah. And um, I still remember the first time Tristan came into the office. This was years before. This is years before, but she walks into the office and I see her and I immediately notice her, right? And I, I lean over to my coworker and I'm like, who is that? Yeah. And my coworker's like, don't even think no about it. No fly zone. Yeah, that, don't, even think, don't even think about it. That's the boss's daughter. And then like the clip. Never going to happen. And like the ugly sh home, you're like, this excites the hell out of exactly. me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's like challenge the exact accepted. Opposite. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Sounds good. And man. what's funny though is like, I didn't notice him that but years because I was not in a position to notice him. But then when I actually was and he was like dead center, it was like instant. I was like. Where the hell you been? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, who is that? I need to know who that is. It's just this, again, it's like divine. Like, you know you're supposed to do something there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I and asked then, my mom, I'm like, who is that? What is his name? And she started serving him up on a silver pot. She was meat. my biggest supporter. She was waiting for you to take notice. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But she was like, he has a great family. You know, he's he's a Kalam, he's from Kailua, all this stuff. And I was like, okay. And I slid into the DMs. Yeah, she slid into the DMs. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that was still within range of the matchbook era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, 
That was the first time I had ever done that. But it was but. crazy though. Uh, like we hung out that first time and we literally hung out every day after that. Yeah. Like it was, it was one of those things where. Was that easy? It, it was, was that easy. It uh, was when, that when easy. When we met each other on that first interview, right? That first date, yeah. it was from then on, we knew. I think both of us knew inside. And, uh, yeah. and we hung out literally every day after that. Got married. A couple years later. Yeah, a year and a half later. Did yeah. you tell mom right away? I or were mean, you were you guys kind of creeping around the office having fun? No, mom knew. Mom knew. <laughs> and I, I, I think I even told her, I'm like, I'm going to DM him. And she was like, okay. You know, and so she knew. She totally knew. And I think she knew instantly that it was supposed to be, a, it was going to be a good thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. so cute. I yeah. know, our little it's love crazy. story. Mothers know best. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> uh, Kalamas of Kailua. Mm. What's it like becoming a Kalama? It's amazing because everything you hear about the Kalamas is absolutely true. Um, I was welcomed with just so much love and just like a big hug. It was never like, who is that? Who are you? It was never any of that. And so I also think it's, it's almost like a, it, I felt a privileged. Like I was like, oh my gosh, I get to be a part of this amazing family, especially because my mom also, when she was serving him up, served up the dad too. Mm -hmm. And your dad is an amazing human being. Yeah. Um, he's so smart. He's so well-educated. He's, he's so, so well-respected well in the community. Respected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's, and, and everything that you hear about him publicly is all true private. Yeah. Like he's just that person. So I think I felt that same kind of like responsibility of coming in to not disappoint, to not be like, who is this girl come on high springing around? Yeah. So uh, it was, it was a privilege. It was amazing. What was the actress's name that married road to Megan? Megan Markle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know why that popped into my head. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're the. It was definitely not a, a Megan Markle moment. No. But, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I was so nervous. My family loved her. You, you, I was so nervous the first time I met your parents. First time I took her to meet my parents. Yeah. It was pretty early on, too. It was a couple months in. Yeah. A couple it was pretty months early in. on. Yeah. Um, do you remember what my dad said to you? Do you remember where we were? We were at Oahu Country Club. Yeah. I was wearing a dress this color. Yeah, I, dress. I dressed up. I told my mom, like, I'm so nervous. <laughs> yeah. What do I wear? Like, um, and she's like, just be yourself. And ultimately, that's what you see is what you get with me, mm -hmm. honestly. So I was just like, okay. And he said I was beautiful or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and he He, he said, Come on, how did you get yeah, pulled me aside and he's like, How did you do that? <laughs> 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 oh man it yeah. was it was hilarious i mean just yeah it was great that was yeah a couple months in it was, it was, yeah it was but cool. we were very serious very early on i think we were and then my parents knew how good she was for me mm. right and um they were so thankful that God brought us together. He's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I always say, I think she changed, she definitely changed the trajectory of, of my life. I don't know if I ever envisioned, I didn't envision for sure having a family like I have now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like, we've been through a lot. Both of us have been through a lot. So yeah, yeah I think both of us were each other's saviors. Yeah, totally. You guys had been through a lot individually prior to. Yes. Yeah. Together. A ton. yeah, yeah. So you got Tons. all that out trauma of out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah. that's why we always say, like, uh, I was older, you know, and I, I, I do think men mature a little bit it's a fact. later on well, in life. Isn't there than women? like it's a clinical a study that <laughs> says men be, don't mature until they're forty? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, even though you're nine years old, your probably maturity level is equivalent, right? Close. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yes, definitely. If that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, it was just it was just perfect timing man yeah like it I, really was there's yeah. no other way to explain it and i like i said we'd gone through what we checked all the bullshit boxes yep in order to find a kissed frog to find prince you know what i mean right. so yeah totally and did you grow up where did you grow up east side you said east side so i grew up on duck road in kailua 
Okay. Yeah. So you guys are, are both in Kailua. Yeah. So crazy. It's that's, crazy. That's the thing, right? Like, we're... I mean, how many times did you pass each other and not even know? I never know. I mean, we probably have been to, like, the same parties, but yeah. I was, like, the young, like, little girl, and he was, like, the older guy at the party, but yeah. we didn't notice each other because yeah. we weren't supposed to, you know? What, what's crazy <laughs> is I know, so, because we're both Kailua people, I know all of her friends' older Old yeah. siblings. That's generation. Yeah. yeah. So her friends, older siblings were the, the kids that I grew up with that I knew. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know their little yeah, brother. Yeah, I was good I know friends with little his little sit. brother. Yeah. I was like no. best friends with the older, the older brother. <laughs> so you know? funny. Yeah. <laughs> but Kailu is a small place, you know? And so I'm... I'm kind of surprised that we never encounter. I'm yeah, happy. That I'm happy that I didn't though, because no. if I knew you and you were super naughty, like yeah, not she a chance. Have, she might have not not liked that. So. Wait, super naughty? I want to hear about this. <laughs> yeah. Who's naughty? I was a typical Kailua boy. Yeah. Like getting party, into trouble, fighting, you know, drinking, fight, you know, get into trouble, um, all the the bad things, you know. Being so. a punk, you know. I just I've never. I feel like I'm an older soul in, yeah. a, in a younger person's body. And I think that's just because of what I went through. So I was never like that kind of shit. I was always like, ugh, get away. Don't be moke around me. Like, no, you know? <laughs> Did you say don't be moke around <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, like, <laughs> don't puff your chest over here and try to be that cool boy that's never been, nah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are gonna have to use the word moke and then a I definition have the subtitle on the episode. It. <laughs> oh, you tell me what the definition of a moke is, though. <laughs> well, well, I mean, do you have an older picture of him? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good. <laughs> this is moke days. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. I know. <laughs> Classic. What does Kailua mean to you as a Kalama? Mm. Ah, oh, man. How far back does it go? How deep is the Kalama Ohana tied in and their roots into Kailua Town? Uh, I know. I mean, here in, in Hawaii, my dad knows all of our genealogy. Mm -hmm. And we go back 64 generations in Hawaii. But my dad's mom, my, dad, my dad's parents actually grew up in um, Poa. Okay. Yeah. And then they came to Kailua. So my dad, my dad's parents were like the first generation that was here. My grandpa is like a legend in Kailua. Oh, if yeah. you ask anybody who Uncle Charlie was, everybody, I, it's my grandpa, but uh, they would call him, everybody knew him as Uncle Charlie. He was a wild Hawaiian. He, <laughs> he, he had, uh, he would always, he's known for wearing um, overalls mm -hmm. with a red palaka shirt, one strap down. If you, oh, yeah. everybody knew him like that. Like he that was. That one strap was kind of like. Just, yeah. That's yeah. how you know, strap. right? <laughs> but, I'm ready. <laughs> but he was, he was like very well, well respected. He was a fisherman. He, he built boats. Yeah. He literally helped everybody. Very smart man too. Super, super smart. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it, Kailua is everything to us. That's like, it's in our blood, right? And I think there's a bunch of families um, in Kailua similar to that right all kind of came up together and, right. they're, and they're still here you know kind of like the founding fathers exactly. of the local community within uh, the town yeah a hundred percent yeah so Kailua is just it's home it's, it's where home. I'll always be um it's a place that I have a a unique relationship with I think I, I think our families both do but we always will yeah uh, a lot of responsibility all of all of the all of the good things come with a lot of of responsibility responsibility right yeah. and so um i don't i don't think we'll ever leave kailua that's for sure no cannot it's crazy because when we were when we were before real estate and we were like even growing up i always envisioned owning a home in kailua it was like never even a thought to live anywhere else it wasn't even an option. It was yeah. like Kailua or nothing. You know what I mean? Because that's all I knew growing up. I was born at Castle Hospital and went home to Duck Road. Never lived anywhere else. You know what I mean? So it was like, how, but how are we going to achieve that? Yeah. How yeah. is that achievable? Because you know, Kailua prices are nuts. Right. I mean, not, it, it's expensive. That's one of the, the sub markets of Oahu that is very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, but there's so much about, I think, 
Kailua that's special. I mean, you get, it still feels old school, but then it has modern amenities. You know, we have beautiful beaches, but we're tucked up against the Ko'olau. Yeah. So we have this, it's raining outside right now. You know, we have this lush greenery. I think it's a small town, so you just know everybody. You still have that small town. That's the cool thing too, yeah. yeah. Like I always, feel. I think, I think family. When I hear Kailua, I think family. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and part of it's because my family's so large and most of us are still here. Yeah. yeah. Like all my cousins are still here. Now they have kids. Some of their kids have kids. Yeah. So having a huge family, um, I, makes it is going to make it home. feel yeah, yeah. home yeah. right yeah. Uh, but I mean she always jokes around in Kailua especially we can't leave the house without being long before the show long yeah because now the, the show is 10x that yeah now, and now I'm recognized right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a different situation now but even before that we yeah. go outside I would run into one of my cousins yeah. or yes. I mean how cool is that or you somebody of somebody of somebody I don't yeah. experience yeah. that in other places I think that's what literally makes this place so special. Not yeah. even is just Kailua, that. but Hawaii in general. In yeah. Hawaii, yeah. we have a lot of the little towns that have that same vibe, but yeah. it's because it's it's on the smaller side. We're closer. We run yeah. into each other, right. which is almost why it's so hard to believe that you guys never met prior to that, know, right? right? Going back to that. So, I know. Exactly. And I do. I feel the same way. Kailua is the one place that I've actually felt like a part of the community aside mm -hmm. from you know, living in Waimea on the big right, island. Right. Um, it's got that same feel, mm -hmm. that same vibe. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more country than it is city. Right. Yep. You know, um, we're close to the water. I do like that you can't build. There's there's no more high rises. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what's going to keep Kailua. it. Look around Kailua. Yeah. There's like there's one. one. There's yeah. one. And and there's there's no more permits to to no. build up anymore. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. Not at all. Not yeah. that. High. So it'll stay the same. Yeah. Uh, the feel, but the prices. The prices have. And as as a local boy, I was proud. I mean, I was smart enough to marry a white girl and then buy in Kailua. Like <laughs> my dad, my dad. That was my ticket in. That was your dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was kind of my ticket in. <laughs> but there's not too many native Hawaiians or locals that can actually afford to buy in Kailua. You yeah. know, so it's yeah. Uh, Any place that is this special yeah. and then gets that uh, kind of attention, mm -hmm. uh, people want to be here. Yeah, yeah, the same reasons why we love Kailua Everybody is does. what draws tourists to Kailua. The beauty, right? Yeah. Exactly. Right? The beauty, the beaches, the feel, the the, small the town. hometown feel, the, the, the local the, shops, yeah. like yeah, the all of shops. these things. The small shops. Yeah, the small shops, and like, we all know the ones that are starting these small little entrepreneurship. Exactly. Like, so supporting them is like a no brainer. Yeah. 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 And then all of that demand coming here and people wanting to be here and live here is going to make prices rise, yeah. right? And, and they will continue to do that here in, in Kailua. So, I mean, I don't, gotta, you got to do what we did or figure something out, but. Yeah, well, that's a whole other podcast, right? Yeah. <laughs> or it is, is it? but I mean, we, we can, you know, uh, put a notch in that and yeah. come back to that for sure yeah. because yeah. It, it's. You know, it's one of those things, like, I don't know. Do people, have you gotten comments from people maybe outside of Hawaii that are watching a show and they're like, no, that can't be real? Like, oh, Absolutely. Or like, why is it so expensive there? I, yeah. I think with the show, the f overall feedback that we've gotten has been amazingly and beautifully positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's always, there's three sides to every coin, but... Mm -hmm. Then there's the flip side, right? Of people that are like, don't know who we are, don't know what we do, call are saying that it's all full of crap. Um, it's way too expensive. Uh, I'm local, I'll never be able to afford that. So there's, there's, we get both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah no matter what. Yeah, yeah, but you don't let that hold you back from no, accomplishing. No, I can't. We can't. Yeah. I, I can't. And that's a very, I think that's for anybody that is even on social media or trying to go after whatever God put on their heart to achieve. You have to almost block it. You have to just turn it off yeah. and you can't pay. Because those small, and, and that's not even the majority of people. The majority of people is like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. The the very minority though can make the most negative impact on entrepreneurs, business owners, local people trying to do stuff. And why is that? Because I mean, we all struggle with self-esteem and all that stuff. Our insecurities Our let insecur them yeah. Yeah. stoke that fire. So like my biggest thing is like, and I had to learn this that even though you put yourself out on social media it's and it's a public forum per se, it's still your 
place on social media. Mm -hmm. You can choose who you interact with mm -hmm. on your on your page and who you allow onto your page. And so that would be like something I recommend for people that if if you, block them, delete it. Don't allow that negativity because if you allow that seed to get planted, mm -hmm. it's so on it's so hard. It's a weed, dude. Weeds come yeah. back. It's like freaking nut grass. Never goes away. It always comes back. Like, and you don't need it. You don't have time. No, you don't not have at all. Time. And, yeah. and the thing is, is I think that that both of us are all about thoughtful conversation. I think thoughtful that's where change happens, and yeah. that's where community comes together. Mm -hmm. But especially on the social media side, there's always going to be a, a piece to it where no matter what you say, if you engage. You're wrong already. You're yeah, wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing will ever come of it because you're not changing any anyone's minds and, and some people just want to say what they want to say and they're they're gonna be negative no matter what. Now, there is a way to come with constructive criticism to get a conversation started mm -hmm. that we want to have. We love Absolutely. to have those conversations because in those spaces, people are sharing their opinions, but they're open to hearing feedback yep. as well. Yeah. And that's how you can really come together. I think that's one of the biggest problems that's missing. right now is- People take your your view as, as uh, an offense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where it's not. It's, it's just, just an opinion. It's just, it's my view. Yes. Yep. I'm not putting yours down. Yes. But without engaging in that, it, it is, and I think there's probably some fear on that because oh, maybe they're not real pono with their position, with their, you know, yeah. so they lash out. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Or there's something there that is triggering for them, but the easiest way is just to, again, lash out, right? Yeah. yeah, so I don't even know what your original question was, but yeah, positives and negatives, but you you got to almost block it out. You can't pay any attention to it. Because once you do, it's really hard to undo the negativity that it's spewed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys set a schedule for how much time uh, for content creation, for, you know, how much time do you guys, because I know that you guys are still responding to your own social media. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Because I I, res yeah. I make comments and I know that it's you guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, so at how much time do you allot for that? And then... Uh, at what point do you have to put that in somebody else's hands? Like, because you're going to, at a certain point you scale, right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. And, and you know, what's crazy is what, what we're talking about offline is like finding the right fit for that. Because again, people can tell when it's not you responding, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? And that's the opposite of what I would want any follower or engager on our platforms to feel. So that's something we haven't given away because we haven't found the right fit. Yeah. Um, There's something special too about um, being connected in that way where you truly are engaging with the the people that are reaching out to you. I and I know, know it means a lot. You ever want to give away? Either. Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think there that is. I think in, in I do get your point to being able to um, to grow and to to scale, right? Like we talk about scaling all the time, but and I think there always has to be a, a personal piece of it that that is you still, yeah. that yeah. stays in there and yeah. still does that uh, at whatever capacity it can be. Yeah. But I think we probably should have handed our social media off a long time ago. And we've had other people um, mm -hmm. that I mean, have worked with us with our social media. I think it just comes down to making sure that that's the right person. I think it's not something to be taken lightly. No, no I think we take everything very like we take things on. We feel them. Right? I'm an, I'm an emotional creature, but yeah. I think there's a difference between posting, having somebody come on and help post and um, share on stories mm -hmm. and like do marketing stuff that's very business oriented. And then there's another part that I don't know if you should ever truly give away, which is the true engagement. Yeah and responding, yeah. right? So if we ever did, I know we will find the right fit. It'll be more for the business side of social media platform, not the engagement side. That is refreshing to yeah. hear. Yeah. Um, but as far as time, we probably spend way too much time because uh, it's still us. And you still and you you have your subscriptions too now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you, and, yep. I'm, and you're I'm taking trying, everybody with you. And I'm ta yep. we're taking everybody with us. And um, yeah, I mean, I try to have, I try to, 
plan what we're going to put out and, and post it. But then it's important that we're in there and we're responding because I think social media, if used properly, is so powerful. It's a walking billboard. It's your walking business card. It it's is. a it's a genuine representation of who you are, what you do, um, and what you hope to achieve. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and I, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I would be the first to say that it's okay to spend so much time on that social media side. I especially when you're when you're building your business yep. um, because. Everything comes from that, bro. Like I'll tell you straight up, we get we we meet capital partners from social media. We find deals through social media. We sell all our merch through social We've media. We've been able to build deals in Aloha just through we, social media, right? Yeah. That but community, you we know, impact the most people through social media as well, right? And, and we hear those messages all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, if like Tris said, used correctly. I mean, it will be your biggest, biggest tool. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the main thing is that if you're going to spend whatever chunk of time it is, is that it's being used to grow your business your brand. and your brand yeah. and you're not just being a consumer of content. There's a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. And Big you know, difference. you know exactly when you're just being a consumer. And I'm not saying like I can go on at 11 o'clock at night when I'm trying to shut off my brain and just, he'll, he'll tell you, I'll have laughing, hysterical, where I'm just, that yeah. content is freaking hilarious yeah. and that's healthy to do that. But if you're doing that for eight, 10 hours a day. You're not productive. Not yeah, healthy. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's yeah. definitely a line there. There's definitely a line. But yeah, I mean, I try to do my post, go in, engage and then there has to be a moment where you're working on other things and you are putting the phone down and if that means like leaving the phone in the other room sometimes it's for the best so be it right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean because we're always walking around with it in our hand oh yeah. my gosh you'll see yeah. on the show i have my phone in my hand like 90 percent of the yeah. time and that's because that's our business is on this freaking phone right yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know every time i go to the doctor and they you weigh in I, I empty my pockets, but I keep my phone on me. I mean, because this is truly how much I weigh. I walk around with it <laughs> all the time. All the <laughs> yeah, this is That's true. Funny. Real life. The production, uh, one of the producers was like, oh, no, we already know. That's like a fixed uh, thing in every Appendage. scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just it literally phone. is, though. They would give me so much shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the fun part about it. And I think that's where... Your your humor and your playfulness started to come out on camera. Yes, and yeah. we were you know we were talking about that because your your meetups that is part of your business is yes. part of your brand. So yes. you have to represent that in a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. And we only have so much time to get in in the middle of a construction zone. Some of them are construction, some of them are, are finished. Yeah. But in the construction zone, there's even more like cautiousness of people being around on the job site, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's it's understanding that you're not always gonna get yeah. the playful yeah. you know side of Tristan and, and Kamohai. At the meetups, no, like we're we're very especially with the meetups, we're value driven. We're mm -hmm. like, okay, how can we yeah. give the most value? What do at you these need? Things? What do you have? How can I how help can you? we connect? How can I you know, it's also like you're putting as an entrepreneur or a business owner, you're wearing multiple hats. So in that we're wearing a certain hat when we go to those meetups, yep. right? And it's to how to create impact, how to connect people together, how to share this information in a way that we want it to be shared, and how do we just network, network, network. And so you're not going to get the, like, him and I shooting the shit, poking jokes at each other's side. Yeah. Which, I mean, I think if you spend, if you know us and, like, we're having a long conversation, I'll crack jokes with you or whatever. I'll say something. Yeah, you'll, you'll get it. I'll, you'll get it, but. A while. Yeah, but not I think that's to one the thing. full extent. Right, <laughs> at, at the, the meetup specifically. But I think that's one really cool thing about the show was that they were really able to capture an authentic, intimate side of Tris and I. And, um. I don't think that always comes across on TV, you know? And I, um, I, I'm glad that the production team was able to show us in our real light. Which is super important to us when we fought so hard that if we're going to like kind of stand there naked in front of the world mm -hmm. and be vulnerable, because you don't just see our business, you see our marriage, you see our kids, yep. you see our family, that's very vulnerable. Super personal, it's, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, um, that we were being shed in the light that is truly us, yeah. you know, and that is truly our family. And, it, and the, another, the one of the biggest compliments that anybody can tell us to is from the people that actually know us, 
and then they see the show and they're like, no, that's who you oh, are. That's yeah, that's you. That means so much. Cause yeah. I, can you imagine if you're like, oh my gosh, that's not them. Oh, Hollywood kicking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, like, that, oh my gosh, I would so hide many, under a there's rock. There's so many layers to that too, especially with just where we are, where, where we are in Hawaii and how a lot of Hawaii sees real estate. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh and, man, and that's so, controversial. Like yeah. we had these conversations like beforehand for a long time, right? And yeah. we understand our kuleana and and we also understand what we do yeah. and who we are. Yeah. And the people that are around us know that as well. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be inviting a whole bunch of other eyes that are on us that don't know us. They don't They don't have us. any context. They have no context. Yeah. No context at all. And the sad fact is, is that, that there have been people in the past that have created this persona of what a, a real estate investor is mm -hmm. or um, just real estate in general, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of fighting an uphill battle because people hear that word, it's like a trigger word. It's, it's, it's automatic negative. Automatically bad. It's automatically yeah. negative. You're automatically against our culture. You're automatically not trying to help local people. Or you're selling off pieces of Hawaii, that's why. You're, yeah, exactly. And right. so yeah. it going into it, we knew we were gonna Eyes have wide to open, face bro, like, those things. And so when we talked to the production company, even more so, because they don't know. They have no they idea. They don't understand. Because they're not from here. No, no. they're yeah. not. They, they make shows a certain way. Like, that's just how it is. So we needed and talked to them for a long time about being able to show us in a in an authentic light with who we are, with the business that we run. We had to fight for the blessings to be in every episode. Because really, it kind of gives, yeah. Why? Because, because what, it, it's it's bordering like religion which can yes. be controversial yeah i think there's that side of it i think it's it became the what's the word that that the was used it's monotonous to have the same thing at the end of every episode but they don't understand the meaning behind why that's done you know and mm -hmm. it was like no this has to be in there because when we're talking about walls and a roof like where's the culture in that yeah you know yeah. and we can only share so much of uh, everything of of who we are, what we do in each episode, and still make it TV-ified. Yeah, you know? and, and even more than that though, we've been doing this for a lot longer than the TV shows yeah, been around, yeah, right? Yeah. And so we want you to show what our business is. We bless every, every single house. house because we have to. That's that, a it's house isn't done, done <laughs> until it's blessed, it's <laughs> not. And so we're gonna, Film it. Like it, that's the, one of the conversations. You want to film us? Okay, let's make a TV show, but you're going to make it about our business how it is. That's, yeah. that's you know the authenticity what I mean? and the yeah. organicness that we really fought and for. So, and luckily, we were blessed with a really good production team and crew that understood that and wanted to capture that. But you're still working with mainstream media. So it was like, a, it's always a song and a dance. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? Yeah. You yeah. got to fight for every inch. To give and a take. Of yeah. That. yeah. Got yeah. it. Got how did it. you guys? come across the opportunity did it come to you or you guys saw it yeah so that Craziness. that's an awesome story uh tris and i never had tv on the vision board like there was no sit down and we do goals every single year mm -hmm. you never saw have a tv show <laughs> up on the on the goal no, board no. it was nothing we sought after we never even it wasn't even a furthest thought in yeah. our minds yeah uh, i like watching so, them though i was like yeah, i, I mean, love we, watching you them. like seeing a good transformation hgtv is always on tris would always watch yeah. that I watched it my know? whole life yeah um and then we're in the same industry so it's like also interesting right, if, you, right. if you see like a Tarek on tv or whatever mm -hmm. it's like our, our sports like yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, totally. yeah no that's <laughs> that's real no that's bullshit oh that's a cool design well, yeah i mean okay so before we get back to that, i would uh, i didn't want to forget but what was the last home tv show that was popular in hawaii in hawaii yeah. in hawaii like was made here yeah. i don't even know you remember hawaii life oh yeah i, I know remember hawaii, hawaii life, life. Right. hawaii life and then there was the the brother aloha and builds. of the brother, there was a brother and sister, and sister design aloha builds. team oh, they I did one season one. yeah they did one season it was um, like four years ago and it's funny that you bring that up because a lot of people are like oh you're doing a tv show in hawaii there's like a curse no tv shows do super well there yeah yeah I don't like because they're not. They weren't they're, authentic. They're not doing them right. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. There's, so. I, I tried to do some research. I don't think there's ever been a, a show like ours. No. 
just like logistically, like we buy houses, we renovate them. From the investing investor standpoint, right? There's right. been like sell houses, retail, right? Hawaii life yeah. retail, and uh, Aloha Builds was a um, uh, home design. So like they would get hired by a, a family homeowner. to come in and renovate a kitchen or- Which is HGTV MO, right? Bread and butter, yeah. That's yeah. what they yeah. do, that's yeah. what they're known for. That's all the shows are a hit that do that. So, but it didn't It didn't go. Like, I don't know why they didn't get picked up. I don't know, but like, there hasn't been tons of really successful Hawaii shows. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a change in the, the era too, because now there's way more Hawaii TV shows, uh, uh, movies yeah mm -hmm. we're getting a lot more popularity right yeah on camera so now we're a desired backdrop yeah 100 yeah so exactly. maybe the timing was right for you maybe. guys yeah. to be yeah but i mean the production company essentially slid into our dms via email <laughs> i mean we, we randomly got an email and we both looked at each other and we're like this has got to be a scam let's pay no no attention I just, to it i didn't like, just ignored it i ignored boom, it boom back to our regular business jamming away and we started getting reached out to by other people that we trust in Hawaii. They're like, hey, this production team reached out to me. They want to make a TV show. They're looking for a husband and wife duo. Very specific. That's doing a certain amount of deals in Hawaii and that we think would be good on camera. Three things. And we gave them your guy's name. And there, were, there was like three people that told us that. And we're like, wait, didn't we get an email from yeah. a production company like three months ago? And then... So I was like, okay, well, maybe this isn't a scam. But then we also had our mentor, um, Pace Morby, who he mm -hmm. was filming his first uh, TV show for A&E. Yep. And I'm like, how do I, I called him up. I'm like, how do I even know that this production company is legit? Yeah. yeah, like this could be anybody, you know? Um, and he told me what to do, you know, like go and look at their resume or whatever. And sure enough, they, they, they're they legit. They're out of LA. They make they, TV they shows. They make TV shows. Yeah. And then we were like, do we really want to do it? Well, let's just see what they want. Did yeah. a Zoom. And then Zooms led to more Zooms, led to really hard conversations between him and I when it started. Like when they said, oh, we want to come down and do a sizzle reel, which is we spend one day together yeah. and we film whatever to, to have a concept of a show. Um, it was like, okay, is this real? Like, are we really going to do this? And that's where I think the hard conversation started. We All had, those conversations, what we were talking about earlier. But a yeah. lot of, being that TV was never on the radar, it was like, we had no idea what to expect and yeah. how long and intense of a process it is to get greenlit for a season on unscripted television it's so hard really yeah so yeah. like you do you do all these zooms then you do a scissor roll that scissor roll has to go up the chain to the network get approved to then do an act one which goes up the chain to the network which then you have to get approved to do a pilot which goes up the chain to the network so i think you know our close net of of investors knew that we were working on something but it had been two years already and they're like ah you're never gonna get a show Wow. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to happen. They, they were calling bullshit already because it takes so long. And a lot of these people that do, a lot of these production companies get an allowance or whatever it is, get paid to go and source talent and develop a TV show. They get all the way to doing the pilot and the pilot doesn't get greenlit yeah, for no a full greenlit. season. Yeah. If at all, right? If yeah. at all. Yeah. You know, totally. and it could have got stopped at any point. So then we actually shot our pilot, which is episode one of The Treehouse, in 2022. Wow. Yeah, that's when we shot that house. But we started talking to him in 2021. Yeah. So the first time that we talked to um, the production company was, it's been almost four years. It's been a long years. time. Yeah. And, then, and then the pilot, you know, had to get fully done. Then it had to go uh, to the network to get greenlit for a season. But they only review them at certain times of the year. Mm -hmm. And it's yes or it's no. So you, you film you're waiting. You wait. Yeah. You're just waiting. Yeah. But you're just running your business as usual, right? And then we got greenlit in February, I want to say, of 2023 or something like that. February, March. The end um, of, yeah. Greenlit means you green have to okay was, for all the Greenlit means all the rest. You're, yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. give you so a So we already filmed season. the pilot. Then they're like, okay, we, we want to order the rest, the seven more. And so we started filming it. Yeah. Literally right away. right away. Right away. I think March or April of 2023 is when we started. And we filmed all the way through December of 2023. And then then you then you're like, okay, I filmed this whole season. When is it coming out? Yeah. 
They don't tell you until like two weeks before. Two weeks before. They're like, oh, really? Oh, oh yeah, dude. Like, yep, you're in an air on You're this like, time. when is it coming out? When is it coming out? When is it coming out? Um, and then they finally tell you, and you're like, oh, shit. Okay, like, what are we going to do? Plan everything. <laughs> yeah, figure um, it all out. Yeah. Throw a huge party. And then they gave us an air date of February 20th of 2024. And now, you know, it's been airing this whole time. So we're halfway through, I think, the first season airing. Episode yep. four yeah, was episode this Episode four was this last week. We yeah. have four more. Yep. Yeah. But it's been a wild ride, dude. I mean, again, never knew what to expect when it was all the things. I was probably one of the most difficult ta- talents. She, she thinks that. I don't think so. I think I think that there's some way worse, more difficult people out there. But it was more so coming from a place, and I think that's why it was a beautiful mixture. It was coming. They knew where I was coming from a place of like, no, if you're going to film our stuff, like it has to be real, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, no, I'm not going to say that because I would never say that. Yeah. You, you know stay know true I mean? to yourself. You have exactly. to. Exactly. You have to. But and you I have think, to fight for that. Yeah. And, and I think that the production team has learned a lot um, yeah. just with dealing with, with us and our business and our families, right? Yeah. I don't think they ever even knew what they were getting into. <laughs> no, they've but, never done a show of that caliber, let alone in Hawaii. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is how you guys do things in Hawaii. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think all of the things that we do are what makes everything so special. I don't think you can come to Hawaii, especially with a show like ours, and not film it with a local family that is literally here doing it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, it, it just wouldn't work. Like, it wouldn't no, work No, it wouldn't all. work, yeah. Um, and we, then... They'd be receiving... The world would be receiving the information from the wrong messenger. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Totally. Yeah, so. you know, and again, I think that was divine intervention. I have no idea why God was like, hey, I'm going to open this door, walk through it. No idea. I'm still figuring that out. But I think it's, I want to say it was to, it, at the end of it all, when I do like my peeling the onion and layers and meditation, it always goes back to impact. And like, how can we do that on a wider scale? It has to be through, like, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. Go I mean, on we, national television. TV we, is 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 the pinnacle of media. Of media, right? And so social media is where everybody's at. We all have access to it. What's higher than that? Right. That would give you the most reach. One hundred percent more impact. And that's yeah. literally what it was. And I think that that was our conclusion when we actually did pull the trigger. Is like, why did we get into so like, real estate? Yeah. What what are we doing, right? And we talked a little bit about it earlier, but with real estate, we found a way to create something very special for our family for generations, but also have a positive impact on our community and help elevate local communities. Yeah. And the TV show is just lighter fluid to that. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Right? It's and it, full it, on gasoline, dude. I like that analogy. Right. <laughs> yeah. And and so we're able to do what we were already gonna do, yeah. but at a much larger scale and, and way quicker. quicker. Yeah. yeah. So now it's just about capitalizing on that. Now it's actually, yeah. There's like, a momentum with it that you can a hundred percent. behind. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Um, the other weird, weird topic uh, uh, is your socks. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that question? You yeah. have, like, I pick up on really good stuff. Oh, okay? yeah, yeah. And I'm like, because I saw your shoes, yeah. the ankles, and I'm yeah. like, okay, he's got to either be going barefoot or that's he's so got funny. those those hidden socks, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I'm thinking, I don't think he's not wearing socks today. I know. That's, <laughs> I, know. I was yeah, like, yeah, socks, because I would have had him zoom in on them, you know? That's so funny. It's hilarious. I'm hiding my feet Yeah, he's now. like, don't look at my toes. I'm thinking, how the hell do you keep that sock on the back of your heel? Because I cannot. Like, it won't stay. It'll fall <laughs> off and bunch up at the front of my shoe. Like, I, I can't wear those. Like, that's all dude. you do. Do you have tape in the back or no something? Tape. No tape. <laughs> it's a very specific sock, and I will hook you up later. Yes. Um, yes. But one of my pet peeves is if I'm for for the kinds of shoes that I, I'm a very big foot person. Yeah. He's so a huge I love, shoe guy. I love and shoes hat and hats. Guy. Yeah. Oh like, my gosh. I, I mean, I love clothes. Like I because before real estate, you were retail was, in right, yeah. like design okay. and yeah. um, fashion. Like yeah. I've always loved that stuff. Yeah. Um, but so. 
I hate if I'm not trying to wear socks that are high socks that are meant to be shown. You don't want it to be seen. I don't want it to be seen. Yeah, because then it yeah. highlights the, the shoe itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it just took a lot of trial and error to find the right That's sock to fit. Okay, but, because I, this is a problem I've had. I don't like, I want my, my ankles to be seen. Oh, yeah. we gotta get, right? the, yeah. gotta get okay. the homely hookup sock. Then. Okay, yeah. Oh, maybe you should start a sock brand. I don't yeah, know. I think white label it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm getting questions about it, why not? That's well, the goal. People ask the crate, like, the things that you don't think people would pay attention to, they yeah. do, or the things that you would think, oh my gosh, everyone's gonna see that, no one even cares. They don't, yeah, and that's the, our worst fear about what everybody's gonna pay attention to, they don't. They exactly. don't, right? They it, don't. Yeah. Our, our worst fears usually never happen. Never. Like, we, we just yeah. make yeah, it yeah. up in our own minds. Oh, yeah. but, and I'm, I'm like, I'm jealous. I've tried so many different <laughs> socks like that, and they all come off the back of my heel and end up by my toes. Yeah, and then see, I'm frustrated. And, and I've heard, and I've experienced that as well. I understand that frustration. <laughs> a very, very thank you. Yes, because <laughs> I, I definitely have. So oh I will, I will share with you my sock brand. Um, all right. And then we can be ankle brothers. Ankle brothers. Ankle brothers. <laughs> oh my God. You got net bros for pickleball and they always hit the net and you got ankle brothers. There you go. That's hysterical. There you go. I mean. Oh. <laughs> okay, that was that was one of the questions. Let me see what, what else yeah, you got. That's awesome. me. I don't even like wears. I'm I'm the one that I'll just slip my feet in shoes and just rock it. I mean, no I gotta, socks. I gotta wear socks because I'll do like total transparency. If I don't, my shoes won't last. They get so stink. Well, I yeah, you, my foot gets enough. moist, and then the the insert in the the, the shoe. Yeah. It yeah it it doesn't work. I no. don't wear shoes yeah. enough. I think. I'm either in my slides, my just my slip-on slipper stuff, yeah. or I'm in like the work boots, or I'm in vans that I can just slide on and off. So yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that was like one of my top questions: the was, hidden socks. That's yes. hilarious. I love it. Hilarious. <laughs> okay, now that now that you've done a, a whole season yeah. of a show. And I'm gonna assume that that was the boundary of your comfort zone being pushed at to that level, yeah. to that point. Totally. What's the next push of growth that you guys are working on or what goal do you have set? I think we talked about it a lot before the camera was rolling. All the good stuff was before the camera. I yeah. know, I told you. It always you, is. Yeah, I told you, is. turn it on already. <laughs> but I feel like this is the first of many sit down conversations. I, I yeah. think that it's important for us to have these kinds of conversations um, for us because it's good, yeah. but also for everybody that gets to see them, you know? Yeah, I, mean? I want I want people to see the other parts of you that you couldn't add on the show, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, because you're fighting for it to, to get the authentic, authenticity in there to begin with. Mm -hmm. How much other cool little tidbits does the world missing out on yeah. from Kamaha and Tristan? Well, and it's so funny too, because like, we're like in there and using our own jargon every day. And the production company's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I know. Like, okay, you can't talk like an investor because so-and-so from- They don't have the lingo. They have no idea what that even means, yeah. you know? So we had to start thinking a little bit differently when we're explaining the project and even that. So, I mean, it's that, it's, it's hard to fit in a whole house renovation in one hour. In right? one hour. It's right. literally 45 minutes. For but months. do you guys have the ability to dictate what's getting shown? We can or do they film it all and then edit it down and you guys get to see what's left? We film a lot of stuff that doesn't get ever shown. make it in yeah. to, to the show. And then um, the, the, which I don't know if a lot of other people have that. And I think maybe that's how cool our production company is where they put together rough edits. And I mean, there's so many edits yep. that happen before what you see on TV. Yep. So it's really cool that we are a part of that process and we do get to give some feedback. But ultimately, I mean, you're a freshman show. You don't have, nobody. You, nobody gets like creative you know, control like or you get anything full like creative that. That's control. why it's so important um to have that kind of a, a relationship with your production company and vet them from the beginning right like yeah because you could i mean it could have went all wrong it could right? have been terrible and, right and yeah. we were showcased in a very different way that wasn't even us in yeah. any way um and that that's what we were trying to avoid at all costs but yeah. i think the only way you do that is is to have that open dialogue with the production team beforehand and make sure that everything is laid out on the table. Yeah. And we were like very, very happy with 
who we pick. But if you're with. talking about like what's next for us or what are some of the things that we're working on, we're, we always have a lot of things going on. The fix and flip and like the investing part of our business will remain. Mm-hmm. That's not ever going anywhere. I think it's always figuring out how you can do it better. Um, but we're working on tons of things. I think a, a main thing is vertically integrating anything we kind of outsource. How can we bring it in house? Um, so construction is a huge thing mm-hmm. and, and wherever we were getting a lot of interest before and we would have to say no, how can we say yes? How so, do we build a, a business around that, a team around that and, and focus in on those opportunities? So a big one was, do you guys do construction for retail clients? The answer was no. Will you design my kitchen? Will you do this addition? Will you renovate my house? The answer was no for a long time. Because you know, those time. are the evolutions of all the other renovation shows, the right? fix and flip shows. And, and now with the eyeballs, right? We're getting that 10 times where I'm like, but, but why can't we say yes? Is there a way we can incorporate family and we can build a true business that is just for retail clients It doesn't take away from our investing side? Mm-hmm. Um, so figuring that out through... Uh, starting Hawaii custom creations with my brother and my sister-in-law because my brother's a very skilled carpenter. Yep. Um, he knows his shit. And if you spend any amount of time with him, you're going to figure that out really quick. Yeah. And I think we have a good balance of, I can bring the emotion and the design and, and all of that. And then you have your even killed, very level headed, like business guy. And mm-hmm. then you have the, the practical, practical, practical on the job, construction understands side. how stuff needs to be done the right way. Yeah. yeah. So we're kicking that off. Um, obviously, we want to start small and smaller projects and stuff like that. And then we started a furnished rental company, uh, prop- property management for furnished short rentals. Term, short term, midterm. Short term and midterm. It's called Collective Stays because okay. um, a lot of the rentals that we have are midterm and short term in Florida and in Hawaii. And it's like, we're giving away so much money and no one is going to manage our properties how we care want them about managed. your properties. No one's going to care about as them as much as you and are. And like a lot of the people that do get rental properties and are doing a midterm way or just furnished rentals in general, mm-hmm. they're usually a little bit more savvy and yep. they know what they're kind of looking for. So what better way to be able to provide a property management for those furnished rentals than by investors that are doing it themselves. Yep. So uh, we were our, our own test dummies. I said, all right, let's try and do this. We found a good um, integrator, a good operator and said, here's our portfolio. And it's not super small, you know what I mean? So here's our portfolio in Florida yep. and in Hawaii. Let's work out the kinks and be the test dummies so that we can later on take on clients. Your so, proof of concept. Yeah. yeah. And like, I'm not going to sell you something that I, I'm not doing myself. Yeah. But you know we mean? can also start, we can build the business around that too, right? Yeah. So we're going to have, we have the revenue coming in now from just properties we were handed. Right? I mean, there are houses, you yeah. know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So now instead of paying somebody else, that's going to build the team to, we test everything out and then we grow the team and then we start to onboard other, other people, people with you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All of the tools. You're building in place a team already. at that point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, I mean, that was income we were just giving away at, just giving it away to another property manager that, let's be real, it's just VAs that are doing it. Yeah. And they're, no one's going to care about your property as much as you. So now we created a revenue stream that we were giving away before, and I get to be more in control of, no, I don't think that's what needs to be focused on. I care about this when it comes to my rental property. Yeah. And and yeah, so it the, we started that, it's growing. It's I feel like it's uh, a lot of the kinks are worked out. And we're a, lot re- of, a lot of the team is, is built. I think there's like, there's five. Five of us now. So now it's like, all right, let's bring, I think we're in a position to bring on savvy investors that are, they don't want to do it. I didn't, I don't want to manage my rentals. That's why I created a company. That's a different to side it. of it. Yes. Oh, it's a totally different business. Yeah. But it, it's a lot. It's. Yeah. But as an investor, like these are the things I'm looking for. And now we can provide that quality product to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. So that, um, and then education, I think it's been on the forefront of our minds and something that we wanted to do for a very long time. It was just, are we ready? And you got to work through all that mental jargon of like, are you equipped enough to even teach people? Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of people have that for sure. You you have imposter imposter syndrome, syndrome. all that. Yeah. Um, And we're very, again, we don't take anything we do very lightly. So it's like, if we're going to do this, 
do we have the time? Do we have the capacity? Is it going to be something that we would want this, that client experience? You know, all those in the, things. In the end, we just want people to literally crush it. Freaking right? and, and love it. Yeah. Like, and, be and one of the best term. decisions. Like, it's not, a, it's not a, okay, we can throw something together and sell it uh, real quick and boom, you're, you're good. You know what I mean? I think it, there, we've just had a lot of thought go into making sure that we're going to put out a, a product that is going to be valuable, but is truly going to help people. So you we're know? taking our sweet time doing that, but it'll be under the Dills and Aloha umbrella because it's very in alignment with that. Okay. Continue doing the meetups. That's not going to go anywhere. Speaker uh, series. The speaker series. So. I would love to continue to uh, impact through bringing like really quality uh, speakers and and just pouring into the people that are wanting that in, in not a job site setting yeah. <laughs> that's just talking or breaking down a deal. Um, and then the podcast, these, these are, yeah. I feel like so impactful. Yeah. But these are good too, because it also gives us a break. Mm -hmm. Like we get to stop. This is work, work. right now. I mean, it's work. It, it's kind of cool, right? It work. Yeah. It's work, but it's, you Would know you what I mean? Would you rather be working with me or on the job site yeah. right you now? Know, take a step back, you get to relax, you get to talk story. Like yeah. this is, this yeah. is cool. This is a good. It's a fringe benefit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, you know, obviously the TV show, like we didn't commit that much time and effort to just have one season. No. Um, you know, we, we're going to do it. We're going to go gonna big. Do it. We're going to, we're going to continue yeah. to do it. You do you know? already have approval for a second season or how does that work? I don't think we're officially able to stay, but there are murmurings and, and I think okay. it's something that's going to come to fruition very soon. And right. we're kind of telling them like, if you want a second season, it's April. Like we, we were renovating well, if you houses. Wanted to launch, if you wanted to launch the <laughs> on the same, same schedule time. that you yeah, said, you yeah. know, like, like you know, it took us that long till December to to yeah. air in February. Right, we're, we're on that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. When you say production crew, does it almost gives me the sense that it's an independent production crew it that is. has to come up to try to find these little nuggets and. Dude, and that's yeah, so, the part of TV that you never even thought about, right? You so think they, they're not from HGTV. No. This is this okay. is no. how it works. Okay, this is what it, yeah. This yeah. is this is how it works. So what happens every year is HGTV or networks in general. Ne okay. Networks in general, yeah. But we'll use HGTV yeah. as an example. We'll get together and they'll be like, okay, we want to look for a show in this area that is a fix and flip show like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And they'll send this piece request. of paper out, request to all the production companies that are out there. And I think they have contracts with production companies, certain, you right. know what I mean? Sure, I don't yeah. know how the it all works. The production companies will get this. They'll be like, okay, we got to find a, a fix and flip show in Hawaii. And they'll go out and they'll try and find the talent. They, they literally find, find these all these people but all the over the world. But the production companies are totally separate from HGTV. Mm -hmm. HGTV, the network, is over here. The production companies are their own entities, mm -hmm. and they're going out and finding these um, talents. Production companies work so hard. You know they're what I hear? constantly searching for I shows. hear so production company is a fix and flip, finding the house, and selling it to HGTV, yeah, which exactly. is the a consumer, yeah, right? Because they help build you guys up, made yep. it all pretty, yep. and yeah. then exactly. That's and interesting. They sell and there's layers too, right? Because production does what they do; they specialize in certain things, and mm -hmm. they they have the experience in what a network is looking for and what's successful on TV yeah. or not. And they have so, the relationships with the network, and they yeah. have relationships. So, like, you're working with that already, and then you have higher ups saying, "Actually, I like this about this episode. I don't like this." So, I mean, it's like this layered, very heavy process. Well, that's yeah. good. I mean, because that's how they keep everybody at arm's length until you are worthy or qualify, right? Yeah. yeah. And, but, but we have to do that in our everyday lives too. We need to qualify people who are worthy of that energy that we're going to give off. A hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. as you grow, that filter gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And thicker you have to. And thicker yeah. and thicker and yeah. thicker. And you have to add more light items to but that But I think filter. one cool thing that we didn't even talk about about the production side is that, yeah, the production company that actually came down was from LA, but... What they did when they came down was they hired a local crew. crew. So Good. what was yeah. awesome was local we got local to work guys. with that local crew a ton. Like yeah. there would be a couple people from the LA production team that flew in. 
Um, and then our core guys were, we're down here. Showrunners, yeah. um, uh, DP was down yeah. here. They already had the, the local essence. That That's yeah. that's smart for them because yeah. that takes away half of the problem. Absolutely. Of 100%. Translation. Yeah, so it was, exactly. it was awesome. Mm -hmm. it, like, we love them. Yeah, I mean, if you had like 10 the film crew or production crew, eight to six are all from here. The yeah. re only a small chunk is from executive LA. Executive. Yeah, producer, and they're the executive. Yeah. They're the executive yeah. producers, right? They're the yeah. ones actually writing the checks. So That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I think everybody will learn a little bit from that yeah. se section. We all had yeah. to learn this the hard way, just like in it, like, what is even a showrunner? What the, what do you do? Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> audio, there's only like three audio guys in all of Hawaii. It's crazy. And they're on every big production. All the commercial audio guys. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we got to work with all of them, but it's it's such a it's a foreign language when you first start doing it and we didn't know anything about how TV worked or anything because it wasn't anything we were looking to do, but we Definitely learned a ton yeah. Yeah. this first season. Yeah. So, I mean, looking forward to God's plan, yeah. right? We have more seasons to come. I think that we've gotten into a really good rhythm to be able to make things easier as, as they come. For sure. Yeah, that's the goal. Easier is I mean, Systems fun. and processes, right? That's it. That's it. I mean, these houses are crazy. So yeah. those problems will always be there. I mean, but. I mean, think about it. You're renovating these houses day in and day out. They come with all of their headaches, all of yep. the BS that you already deal with. Now add... Let's just add another layer. But now it. add cameras, add showrunners, add a network breathing down your neck. It's yeah. just, it adds a lot to the equation. That, that is a lot of uh, weight to add to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you have to go about your day making decisions and then being cognizant of speaking out loud of what you're doing so mm -hmm. that the audience can can hear it, not just see it, because you're not always going to explain it well by action on TV. You, Absolutely. That's why everybody's got captions on their reels now, because yeah. that makes a difference if you can hear it and read it. And no, totally. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I can't even tell you, like, we did a layout, and they're like, okay, explain the layout. And I'm like, what? Okay, you walk in, there's going to be the kitchen over here. And I'm like, guys, we did this already in real time. We're like, no, you need to do it again yep, and again yeah. and again. I was like, okay. That was a learning curve. Too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned education. Yes. What kind of education? And we, I don't know if we talked a little bit about this off camera too, but mm -hmm. what kind of education are you guys looking to yeah. We, so our first education is really going to be centered around what our bread and butter is, what our expertise is, what we know how to do the best. Mm -hmm. And that is That's the fix and, fix and flip. flip. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so everything that is encompassing that, right? How, how you find deals, how you fund deals, how you underwrite deals. Mm -hmm. Project um, management. All the project management. Everything from start to finish, right? To, to be able to be successful in that space. Um, and I think that's what our focus is for sure going to be on for the beginning. I think it will eventually morph into a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in general, you have to build things around what people want. Yeah. And we have been nonstop reached out to about people wanting to learn from us yep. and this in this specifically and so we're just building something around filling that void and I think it's important to like go back to 2016 and 2017 when we're like yearning for more and coming from this place of eager to change your life and is that when you guys started yeah yeah Okay. So between 2016 and 2018, we had a lot going on. Like we got married, we had kids, um, you know, he was grinding at the retail store. I was grinding at the nonprofit. We accumulated tons of debt. We were renting, we were struggling. And so it's like taking yourself back there and what really resonated for us when we were seeking, what allowed us to commit to an education platform and like, that's our client. That's your customer. Yep. That's who my ideal person that I want to help. It's me. Yep. Yeah. Helping you know us I mean? from back then. Yeah. 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 Because but, but our having, story isn't unique. No, but having the ability to see that mm. and take yourself back there. Yeah. So many people are so far removed because of where they've come to. It's hard to 
take those steps back and yeah. totally really remember yeah. what that was like. You know, and like even taking bits and pieces because we're huge proponents of education and we're still in mentorships, we're still in masterminds, like taking the stuff that really we liked about that program, we really liked about that program and integrating them into something that is for local people, that's the end goal. But I also think, yes, fix and flip is the primary focus, but I want to like, whether you want to hear about it or not, it's going to be mindset. It's going to be emotion set. It's going to be it's a holistic relative, approach. It's going to, you're going to get financial. I think what we didn't have, and it's funny because we just were sitting down the other day with like one of our friends and we were talking about financial education and all these like systems and stuff. And it's like, God, we flipped our way out of debt. Mm -hmm. We've literally flipped our way out of debt and creating more income from ourselves. But there was a little bit of an easier path. <laughs> like we could have, I don't know, sat down and done, done a budget and figure out debt consolidation and figured out other ways of banking. Other, other kinds of yeah, strategies to pay down debt. Yeah. And there's all kinds of tools that out there that done. we just didn't even know of. Yeah. But do you guys have those skill sets now? Yeah. Because right? those are more fundamental Exactly. 100%. Right? So I think that's what's missing in a lot of education programs today. And that's something that I don't want to miss is like the, the basics, yep. the fundamental stuff that should be taught in like freaking middle High school. school. Well, it's, all the High stuff, school. it's all the stuff that needs to be there before you can do what. what to the, get you there. To get you yeah. there. Yeah. Before you can fix and flip or, and to prepare you for what comes when you do it. Right. So, and even if that's not us, I want to bring them in. Right. And talk about it yep. and like lay that foundation for people. And I think something that was really, really pivotal, pivotal, that's not a word. Pivotal. Pivotal for us was peeling the layers back and like having somebody push that bullshit meter and being like, no, that's really not why you're doing this. And call bullshit and peel the layer back again. And then Who was call, that for you? It was Steve Rosenberg. Yeah, Steve. Um, Ooh, yeah. It was Steve Rosenberg. And it's funny because Tereva, Zasha, and Ipole, those are the three girls that I didn't even know them at the time. But we met through that, that mentorship. That mentorship. It was like, a, and it was like a 60 day intensive. 60 day challenge. It was called 60 day challenge. And it yeah. was, I think we were already, you know, um, in fortune builders at that time. We were in fortune builders. We, we were done a already flipped. Flip. Yeah, we'd flipped a couple um, houses. But we were hitting a wall and it was like, why are we even doing this? Our, we didn't, we were struggling through our first flips. We weren't making a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And he was the first one that was more, he came from a real estate world and background, but he was a business coach. And he was like, why are you even in real estate? Why think down the line 20 years? Okay, now work backwards. You know, like I had never heard that before. And I was a business owner already in the nonprofit. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, I think it needs to start there with, you know, and everyone says, you know, what's your why? But like people don't poke at that why and really uncover it more and more and more. What's well, I think there's another question. Surface. What's your why is the first question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the how is the next question. Right. Mm -hmm. That you know it, it's and not. You can't skip them. Yeah. No. You know. And then once you get into the why stuff, there's layers to that too. Because as entrepreneurs, or if you have this inclining of wanting more, you know there's more out there for you. Chances are you have an entrepreneur bug, and because you have an entre entrepreneur bug, you probably are carrying around baggage that you might not even know that it, it exists. And that you don't need, yeah. Maybe or maybe not, maybe. but a lot of people that we have come across that and that have this bug, mm -hmm. this entrepreneurial spirit, have a lot of stuff in the back, right, in the rearview mirror that sometimes they don't even know is really there. But and even really, if it's like big or small, right? Uncover it, talk about it. Mm -hmm process it so that when you do gain this momentum and you start checking off these milestones or these goals, if you, if it's not processed and it's not dealt with, it'll, 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 it'll rear its ugly head in a way yeah. that might be way more detrimental than where you are in your current but position. It's, but it's that and it also influences you even though you don't know it is. Yeah. So like, right. it influences yeah. the decisions yeah. you're making. Yeah. Right. And so you really have to peel back those layers. You have to focus in on it. And, and a lot of times that means you need outside help. 
to help you do that. Yeah. You can do it by yourself. Yes. Right? Yeah, you don't realize you're doing it or you're no, like no, that. No, you have no idea. Yeah. You, you have need no idea. Some, some, another set of eyes that is trained in that that can help you work through those things. And I mean, like, I think that's the, a lot of the stuff that I want to bring and incorporate into the education platform, whether people are ready for it or not, because it's so important. Mm -hmm. And at, we're coming from a place of experience. I remember our first million dollar year in 2022, I felt nothing. And that's all I wanted when we first started in Ooh. when we got into real estate was to be financially free. You make a million dollars if you you're, you should be fine financially, right? You think and that. You think yeah. that. Yeah. I felt nothing. I even was telling him, I want to quit. I'm not happy. Sure. I'm depressed. Fully burnt out. I yeah. was burnt out, but it took me to go through that to actually understand like, oh, well, shit, I'm carrying around all of this stuff that I, I was running from being an entrepreneur and achieving all of this stuff because I thought I would achieve all of that away. It would fill the hole, right? You, you, can, you can earn your way through it. Well, you, you can, can earn your way through money. it. You can, you it'll, can. If you make this amount of money, it, it'll be okay. It'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. You can success your way out of and it. And what, what ends up happening as business owners or entrepreneurs or I'm telling any guru you see on social media, they think or the common consensus is like, if I have all these external things happen, then I'll be happy. But in reality, that happiness never comes and you're even more miserable when you get to what you thought would bring you happiness. When that shift has to come where you gain your happiness from literally just you. And who you are. And happiness is fleeting. Yeah. Right? All those external things. Yeah, it's yeah. very subjective. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's why even more so, I, I, most people get into real estate because they're trying to dig themselves out of some kind of mm -hmm. money thing, right? We did. And, and that's why we got started. We wanted to make money. We were in debt. We needed to make money. We Nothing were just survival. I wanted to no. buy a yeah. house. Yeah, survival. Survival. But no there is a point where something is going to change and you're going to be okay at some point with money. Yeah. What happens then? Yeah. But then you, you really were only operating from this place of survival. Your, sometimes your whole life. Yeah. Then you, but something has to happen where you internally switch that lens where you don't have to operate from survival anymore. No, now you you're can, in abundance. Now mm -hmm. you're in abundance, but then your whole perspective has to change. Almost who you are, you're yeah. questioning, right? You gotta learn to give it away or it's just, or it's just gonna spoil and I mean, fail. it's And it's such, it's a, such an intimate, deep conversation that I think people don't have with themselves and they can go through their whole life not having it. Yeah. Um, but it's really, and then that's when you really start to understand, oh, it's really about the journey. It's not about the destination. Yeah. They talk about and that a lot, right? Yeah. You hear that a lot. What the heck does that mean? This is what that means. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can't, if you can't learn to be grateful and appreciate the moment, the destination is not going to satisfy that itch. Living, no, it doesn't. But we living think it, proof of we that. We think yeah. it does, right? And, and we think that if at that destination, there's a pot of gold or or some monetary value that that's what the goal is. And it, I mean, I can, it, sometimes people just need to go through it to yeah. experience yeah. it. And we had to do that. But, but what, from our experience, what I can tell you is that it isn't any different there. Sometimes yeah. it's yeah. more miserable and you have to understand how to walk through life and enjoy the moments you have and be purpose driven. I yeah. think that's what the key is. Yeah. It comes down to, yes, we want to make money, but but that's not what fulfills me. Right. There has to be something behind More. it that is purpose driven. Yeah. And we want to teach you how to find that purpose. There. Yeah. That's what it that's what it comes down yeah. to. Right. And I don't think that we we're able to do that until years in, right? But if you can start with that framework mm -hmm. from the beginning, mm -hmm. maybe you don't figure it out right away, but you have that framework we in planted place. The seed. Right. We planted from the, the seed. beginning, yeah. that's a huge step step ahead. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and so I think that's why too with this men what I don't even know. I don't even want to call it a mentorship or an education. I'm thinking of a name that just will hit, right? But I don't want it to be four weeks, six months. I want it to be subscription based and let's ride together as long as you want. Because as I evolve, I want to bring that to the table for you. Right. 
And that's the one thing that the mentorship that we joined that really helped us grow our business is modeled after. It's a journey. It's yeah. an educational journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Deals in Aloha, the journey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love it. But for real, you know what I mean? Because I can't teach you everything that you need to know in four weeks. I can't teach you everything you need to know in six months. You haven't even learned all of no, the other stuff I'm to teach. still learning. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. So like, still, let's roll together for the long haul. If that's what you want, I'm here. I'm, I'll am i fuck with it. Like, let's do it. But together. it's also important because that's, I mean, we, all, everybody talks about community, right? And and that's what's very, very, very important in, in I think, a mentorship more so than what you're learning is yep. The community mm-hmm. that you're building and the community that, that you're in. Mm-hmm. Because who you surround yourself with. Who you right. surround yourself mm-hmm. with. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that only works if people stick together. How yeah. do people stick mm-hmm. together? If they're in something together for a long enough period right. of time. You build right. that trust. You yeah. build that trust you, over. You, you can't yeah. build that yeah. in a short period and of it's time. Crazy it's impossible. I'm so true. A lot of the people that we started our mentorship with are Zasha. Tereva, Keone, mm-hmm. Daniel, you know, when we were You all- guys are all the, the pillars of the, the investing community now. You are who everybody looks up to, that whole lineup. You know it, what I mean? It, but we started all together, together. Yeah. Literally. with this community effect. And it's like, I want to create that. That's the only way we're doing this is if we're replicating that. Yeah. So, What does the word cohesion mean to you? <sighs> cohesion. <laughs> I automatically think design, honestly, because I am such a cohesive designer. Mm -hmm. Everything has to go perfectly um, together, complement each other, Mm -hmm. being balanced with each other. But also be unique. But also be intentional and unique and um, aligned with whatever the end goal of the space is. It all has to be cohesive. So. That, I don't know, that probably gave you some definition of what... what well, this is what it means yeah. to you, right? Yeah, so. that's yeah, what it yeah, means yeah, yeah, to yeah. me. I automatically think of design, but just in life, I think it's it transcends. So, I mean, just balanced, working together, complement. Because um, you if, if something is not aligned or way more out of whack and it goes there, then it's not cohesive. It yeah. all has to be perfectly... Um, succinct I, I mean it's kind of what we were just talking about right with with kind of being uh the conductor mm-hmm. like i would i would equate it to being the conductor and making sure you have all the right pieces to the puzzle so you can you can talk about in 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 building a business or or bringing specific people together for like a conference or um building a community Right, all of the all of the pieces to the puzzle have to fit in their own unique way with their own unique skill sets mm-hmm. to to form mm-hmm. a cohesive unit. Yeah, is kind of what I like that what picture. it looks like. But I think I think the the design side. I mean, it's is, the same thing. It's exactly the same. It's the same yeah, thing. It's, yeah. It, yeah. We have to do no, this. For cohesion houses. equals puzzle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have to. I mean, and making sure they stick together, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is like the adhesive part of the cohesion. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah. and that's the thing in a in while you're for longevity, right? Too. When you're figuring out all of these pieces that like they have to fit, but they have to stay, right? Yep. And yeah. so. Stick. Right, mm. and that's the that's probably the even more important part than just bringing them together is making sure they can stay together. Yeah, yeah. so good. That was so good. Yeah. That's a that's a t-shirt. Cohesion. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like oh, with the puzzle, like you know, it. all the little pieces. Yeah, uh-uh. yeah. I, I think that I mean, you know, chew on it a little bit, but I think there is something along that line of for your education, mm. you know, the journey of it, because yeah. that is the cohesive part. Yeah. Like, how do we? Keep it together yeah. over time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like your marriage. Mm. It's like, and and cohesion. I think I've heard you say it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So, like, I wrote down a word. Like, I pick out these weird things. Like, mm-hmm. you, I go to the movies and I notice the random stuff in the movie that yeah. most people don't. And I'm like, wait, wait, rewind it. I'm gonna show you this. You didn't see yeah, it. You yeah, missed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And those are the things that I see. Um, but when you, I heard you say cohesion a couple of times, and and I saw you folks doing it 
in how you bring your family in. Mm -hmm. Watching the episodes, I saw how you methodically picked who you brought on to each mm -hmm. episode, right? Yeah. From episode one was different. You brought different family members. You had a different realtor in there. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, I can see you're purposely spreading the love and uplifting and bringing everybody in your circle. Yes. And, yeah. and so that's, you know, those are like more of an observation from my right. point of view that, that I see uh, with the 81 cousins, 81, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and totally. I can imagine you guys really putting thought into like, can we hire family? Can we do this? Can we do that? Because hiring family is not the easiest thing. No. You know, I've, not I've, at all. It's I've, a very, very, very difficult thing. I've worked actually. with my grandmother to try to take over her property management company. Mm -hmm. And I realized real quick, uh, all the pleasantries and politeness are out the window. Yeah. yeah. Right? So now, now it's almost to the point where it could be more hurtful, the things that we're comfortable saying to each other yes. at yep. this point, right? Because yes. now it's not just business, it's family. No, yeah. 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 And, and how do you draw that line? And are both people on the same page? Yeah. And will you ever be, right? right. It's, it's super, super When difficult. do you cut the, your losses on that attempt? I mean, both people have to understand, especially in a fam family dynamic, that there is a family side and there's a business side. It gets so muddy, though, that that sometimes it's just not possible to have that relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's better you to either, just stay family at that yes. point. You just stay yeah. family yeah. or, yeah, you just don't do anything together as yeah. far as business goes. Or you but. accept the roles. I think if you're really going to incorporate family, you can only do so much. And anybody who tells you that they have it figured out, like, sign me up for their course because it's muddy. Yeah. But if you're not going into it with pure love, number one, I think, and then you don't, you don't just, you don't fully accept the role of like employer and take on all the responsibility of that, or you don't fully accept the role of, of employee and understand that it's going to be so hard. Ah, the accept. Okay. I like that perspective because the acceptance of the job description itself, the responsibility that falls on it, but maybe family, and, and everybody wants to feel special, so maybe family automatically thinks that these rules don't apply to me. 100%. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's, they, they take and, advantage, yeah, and yeah. vice versa, right? Right, 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 right. Exactly. And I think constantly, I mean, I think you have to be super intentional with checking in on that. I know that um, at the very beginning of this year, we did that as a family, you know, my brother, it's very obvious. It's mm -hmm. not just for the show. He is our project manager. Mm -hmm. He's at all of our projects. Um, you know, like what is your goal? Because if being a project manager in the business isn't aligned with your goals, I'm not offended. Let's figure that yeah. out, yeah. you yeah. know? Or if I don't accept your performance, for this role and this, but you have to be open to having these conversations. Yeah. And I think that's how the construction company was actually born, was having these intense conversations where there is gonna be discomfort, there is gonna be tears, there is gonna be vulnerability, where you're like, no, I want more. How can we create more? Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna give you what I've worked super hard for over here. How can we create something new? Yeah. Or how does this use your skill set and align with your goals so it's a win-win for everybody? Or you know what I mean? Like whatever that looks like for anybody's dynamic. Mm -hmm. But like you gotta be okay with having that discomfort. And then dude, there's days where I'm like, oh my God, you're driving me nuts. I don't wanna talk to you. And then there's days where it's like, let's just shoot the shit and have fun together. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's muddy. It's the it's always it's a work all in the process. Things, it, but I know for a fact he's probably the only person I can call and say, "Dude, my house is on fire," and he'll run inside. So you've already got that built-in trust. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think I think it it has to come down to a lot of just communication. That's literally all it comes down to. Especially if you if you know that this is what you want and it's not going to change, right? Like you have to, to, to figure out what those roles are. You have to constantly communicate with each other. Yeah. And it's important to not take it lightly. Like in the beginning, yeah. the expectations have to be yeah. set. You have yeah. to have these kinds of and, conversations. And put it in writing. Like you yeah. can't be a handshake just like anything else. It's even more so with family. Yeah. But I think for me, like I... My whole life, my parents worked together up until my mom went and ran the treatment center. They worked together. I always saw my parents 
figuring out how to run their business and that dynamic. And I saw kind of their roles. So I think it was natural for when we decided to do it, it was like, it was just- This is the way you were raised already. Yeah, exactly. And so, but working with family is never a decision to be taken lightly. And then we always say, people ask all the time, how do you guys work together as husband and wife? And it just works. I think we talked about in the very beginning, like the complementary skill sets. And I lean into what, if, dude, I don't want to talk to sellers. I was a counselor before this. I was, I'm all talked out. Like talk to the sellers. Yeah. Then I'll do this side. And like when I'm struggling, I'll tap you in. You know what I mean? But like embracing again the role and the responsibility of that role. Um, but I think even more than any of that is you have to have the same vision. Yeah. And, and be very clear with what the goals are. And again, checking in with each other Mm -hmm. and communication and making sure because shit changes all the time yeah Yeah. and before you know it tris could be going this way i could be going this way but we thought we were on the same page right but you you guys you thought you were right behind each other right but you don't check in before you look at it's too late you're too far apart already and so i mean this is obviously we're talking about business but this is a relationship in in general in life right Mm -hmm. exactly um you For us, I think it was a lot easier because we literally share so many similarities Mm -hmm. and so many differences. Mm -hmm. But we're marching to the same drum in the same direction. Like literally always going in the same direction. And we're not afraid to be like, nah, I don't want that. That's not what I said. (laughs) Yeah. Like, no. (laughs) Has there ever come a a point in where there was something either of you really wanted, like you envisioned it, and for some reason, the, the other half wasn't able to see it yet, and then you're just supporting based off of faith only? I mean, I think the initial desire to get into real estate was that way. We for knew a- we wanted something different, but like I, I'm the kind, I think I was so naive almost, that I blindly would have like got us into way more debt just to get into real estate. And he was like blindly following me to the seminar because he didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. We grew up in two different households. My household was very corporate, W-2, get a job, Mm -hmm. um, work for a big company. It's a certain way. And so my mind, even though, right, (laughs) like I've always been fairly entrepreneurial, I, I think that stemmed from just like, rebelling yeah. against my my family yeah. and i did that in a lot of different ways but <laughs> that was one way uh, i still had that framework set in my head from yeah. watching my my like, dad you gotta you know go back I mean? to school and like my i still remember my dad's main goal for me is you got to get a degree got to get a degree got to get that degree mm. that was how i that was how I would be accomplished and make my dad proud, yeah. right, is by doing that. Her side of the family was never that. It was always entrepreneurial, you start want, your own business. You want that dream. You work for yourself. Yeah. And so the real estate thing came a lot easier for her than it did for me to understand. Like I had to break through that framework. Mm. And so initially I didn't think that it was – possible like i really didn't think it was possible to i thought what they were selling me was a scam like how they were selling you something yeah exactly yeah Yeah. not you're receiving value they're selling you something they're selling me something yeah Yeah. and and that there wasn't a way that we could buy houses with none of our own money because we were in 80 grand we're 80 grand in debt at that time right like struggling struggling and so when I went to the seminar, it was because she dragged me to it. Like I didn't want to, I really didn't even think it was a, a And I, I think we even like, I think we even fought because then, then they do the pitch at the end where you can sign up. And I was like, ready to go. You know, I'm like, no, let's do this. And he was like, no, you're crazy. And so I left there, like we were at odds, you know? And I'm like, yeah. well, well, what the frick are we gonna do then? I, we're struggling, like this is our out. Like, what do you mean? What's your plan? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I remember that. I do. Cause they, they wanted us to sign up for credit right cards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We didn't have 50 grand. They were grand. closing on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we yeah. didn't have 50 grand. They want us to pay 50 grand. And 
we didn't even have the means to sign up for credit cards for 50 grand. I, no. I don't even, if we even wanted to do it, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Right. And so, but she was still willing to try and make whatever, like she wanted to do it. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, when we left that seminar, we didn't do it. But, but what, and I was very like, no, we're, we can't. He put like, his we foot can't down. do it. Yeah. yeah. And, but what she didn't know is during that seminar, something changed in my the in seed my was mind. planted, right? Yeah. Like and I was like resentful yeah. for like two weeks. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Something happened when I was there, and it really it stemmed from when um, I saw local boy get up and he talked about his business. You know, Courtney. Courtney Taguchi. Taguchi. Yeah. It yeah. was him. It was him. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It he spoke him. at he the spoke. Fortune Builders that that we went to. And because I, I just was seeing all these, to be blunt, people from the mainland come yep. up on stage and tell me something that I already thought was a scam, you know, so I wasn't buying any and of it. And we had already been ingrained, right? This is societal. This is generational. Like, this is not what you do. Yeah. You need to go get a job. And even when we went back home to our family, when he finally came around, and little did I know he was doing research on the side. <laughs> yeah. He was doing research on the side. Well, you can't be like, you're right, babe. You know, we <laughs> Exactly. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And, I, and I obviously <laughs> shut down the, the $50,000 thing, but, it, but that whole time, like I said, something changed in my mind. I came home and I was like, okay, but we got to find, there's got to be a different way. Like we can... I, I know we can do this now. Like I, I actually think there is a possibility. There was some there was some knowledge that I was lacking that I now have unlocked and yeah. I know and I'm smart enough to figure out yeah. how to do it. The negotiator yeah. started kicking in all these like skill sets. So then he went, called the program back and said, like, I'm not gonna do these. Do you have something else? And then there was another mini like that they six, weren't selling that there. That they weren't selling. That was like, but they're six like, months. actually. We can do six months for I think like was, a third of the price. I think it was like twelve thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. And he then he came back and he said, "Babe, there actually is this." And I was like, "Holy shit!" He did. Listen, he was. <laughs> we are gonna do this, and we ended up signing for signing up for that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then our family. I'm talking about, and this is something that we're really passionate about trying to change this perspective that is so ingrained in local people that you hit a ceiling and you can't break through it and it's generational and it, it's so deep seated and it, there's so many layers to it, but your thoughts are so, so powerful yep. and what you tell yourself does in exactly become your re reality. Oh, and so if 100%. you're, if, if, if society, the news, your peers, your parents, Everybody is telling you it's too expensive to live here and you cannot purchase that because you can't afford it. What do you believe? It well, and then, you're, and then you're it telling true. yourself that and too, then because, constantly, right? Because all of those people are telling you that, nature versus nurture, everything's yeah. telling you that. You believe that. It's a part of who you are as a human being. There's no other way of thinking. So that, therefore, that's not even a possibility. We had to break through all of that to get to this place where like, okay, let's try this. Luckily it took him two weeks to break through that. <laughs> and then I mean, we joined. One day at the seminar. Do you know what I mean though? Like, yeah. but that's something I think going back to the, the mentorship thing, we want to like double, triple down on because yeah. what you believe and think is absolutely true. So if you just change your thoughts and it, it's a process, but it's totally possible, a whole new world of opportunity opens up to you that you never had access to before. I literally always say that we're, we're only limited by what we don't know yet. Yep. That's it. Like you have to understand what is possible. Everybody has like a, a sphere around them of what is possible. And normally it's just the environment you grew up in, right? Yeah. It's what you've been exposed you know, to. Yes. What you've been yes. exposed to. Yeah. Right. And if if the the person that you know is making a hundred thousand dollars a year, he makes the most amount of money in your family. That's the person that's you the know. Cap. That's that's, it. that's what the goal is. That's what the cap is. That's the is. best you've ever that's seen. That's the best why. you've ever yeah. seen. And that's what you know is possible. But there's so many more things that are out there that are that are possible for people. And it just takes first getting around the right people. Mm -hmm. That's super getting important. Getting the right rooms. But yeah. getting the right information. Mm. Understanding, like for me, 
when I, when I went to that seminar and I learned just a small thing about what a hard money loan was. I didn't know that that's how people bought all these bus of houses. What, yeah. I mean, you hear people say, oh, you can buy, buy deals with cash, none of your own money, but that's it. That's what they say, right? Yeah. But how does that actually work? And learning the intricacies about financing, non-traditional financing, all of that side, um, really unlock something in me. And that, that was a whole new world. Right. Yeah. But I think the first step is you have to, to, you have to get around people that are going to show you what is possible mm -hmm. yeah. and, and lift that ceiling mm. for yourself. Yeah. Otherwise your, your goals aren't big enough. They aren't. Not, it's, not it's hard at to all. imagine. It's hard to picture it and, and really come up with a visual, uh, you know, uh, imagination of what it is. Because if I can envision it, then I can do it. Yeah. yeah. Like if I can see myself doing it, you know, then, oh, you know what? If I can, I see the path, I yeah. can do it. I can do this. Right. You know what I mean? yeah. But if, if you don't even think it's possible, there's no way you're even visualizing but the, what that the, could be. It right? becomes very dangerous for a community or a as people a whole. as a whole when when that's something that you believe, but then not only you're telling yourself that, you start throwing that shit on everybody else in your community. And that's what we see happening. It, mm -hmm. it becomes the most dangerous thing for people. It's because toxic. It's so toxic. toxic bro. Yeah. If you are constantly told that you can't do something, you're not going to do it. You no. can't. It, 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 you're almost scared to try. Exactly. You're, you're being brainwashed. A hundred percent. But how many people have the fortitude to fight off those thoughts if everybody around exactly. you is just pouring that in? And that's why 100%. we all are stay right. down here, right? right? Or the ones that do kind of get here or even here, they don't share it because Bombay, you're high muck -muck now. And yeah. How dare you talk about money? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who are you to tell me? Who are you to tell me? Yeah. Well, what, you're better than me now? So all these people, I can't even tell you how many local families we've sold homes to. They're not going to come out and say, no, I am a local, I am a, a born and raised here. I'm native Hawaiian and I can't afford that house. They're not going to come out and say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Did you see that, um, that reel on social media that used your clip. Oh, did I oh, see yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I might not have oh, seen it. <laughs> oh, 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 this yeah. only girl talking about priced out of paralyzed. Oh, bro. I, I, I was like, hey, Fricka, that's my friend. You know, <laughs> <holy> girl. <laughs> but, uh, oh, how, yeah. What was your reaction to that? I was so, okay, well, first of all, I'm so glad that came out before the show came out because it was my first real exposure uh, and it, it's that whatever happens to me happens to him too but it just happened to have my face on it mm -hmm. right exposure to negativity and some of that was really hateful some of it was very mean and I again emotion is my superpower so I felt every single comment and I yeah. did take it personal but that was like a very pivotal moment for me to learn the concept of block learn the concept of not reacting, yeah. learn the concept of not even entertaining any of that. And I was like, oh shit, okay. Now I understand that if you are doing something correctly and you, you're you gonna get this attention you're gonna get it, yeah. and yeah. you're gonna get both sides. Do you 100%. feel it was ne very negative and 100% negative in nature, how uh, your video and you were used in that video? I don't, well, I mean, I think, I don't it was, think it was right. Yeah, I, I think mean. it was just, this it's is the problem. We're this is about. the problem with social media, yeah. right? Is people will see a, a clip or whatever it is. They'll, without doing any research mm -hmm. on yeah. anything behind taken out that of context. person, exactly. right? Yeah. They will take that like, clip and they will use it how they see it, right? Yeah. With no other background story, no other context, and then they'll share that. And then people are getting a view of something yeah. that isn't even true. The the craziest thing is is both Tristan and I talk about price out of paradise all the time mm -hmm. and we 100% know that it's happening right now yeah to a lot of local families and it was and and in that video is portrayed like that isn't something that's happening or that we're saying that that's not true which I never which said in, which in mm -hmm. no way is the case right yeah. we are uh, we are 
understanding it. And, we see it and with that's our why eyes we're so wide open. And passionate about it, right? right? And that's why she's, uh, we're both so passionate yeah. about it. We're saying that in spite of that, yeah. we have found a way to thrive here. Mm -hmm. And we are showing other local families that it is possible. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to be yeah. priced yeah. out of paradise. Yeah. It's happening. People are getting priced out of paradise, but you don't have to be priced out yeah. of paradise. And priced out of paradise, again, is such a layered thing, right? There's mm -hmm. so many contributing How much factors. of that is being done to you and how, mov how much of that are you letting happen to you? 100%. Right? 100%. Yep. I mean, inflation is is relative in, in so many different aspects of life. I mean, you get better at doing something. Certain trades earn more money as time goes on. Uh, trades cap out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, union, what have you. What you find possible is going to change. Home prices are now at a million. It, it's, it's relative. Like mm -hmm. If you're not elevating yourself to match the inflation of all these other areas, you're, you're just waiting to die. Yeah, 100%. exactly. And I think that's why it's like, we want to come from an empowerment approach, not crabs in a bucket approach. Yeah. Empowerment that like we're leaving proof, you know, that it is possible to do it. And I called it a narrative and that really got a lot because people are like, oh, if it's a story, that means it's not true. But there, that's not the definition of narrative. No. But I was coming from a place of the thoughts that we tell ourselves is our own narrative in our head. And if I'm telling myself this story over and over and over that I can't do something, then then it's true. But you can change it. Yep. What if if I write the next chapter? Yep. What, what if I mean? you tell yourself it is possible? Change what, the narrative. Yeah. And what it if you find the information and the and, and gain the knowledge that you're missing? What if you elevate what's possible? Yeah. Yep. Right. Or you stay in a place where you will never be able to afford a home here. You will, it is too expensive for me to live here. It always will be, it, yeah. it, it, it never will change, right. right? Right. Like you, you have to find that next thing that's gonna help you do it. Like, so I had, when we were talking with Alan, and we asked him, we talked to him about this I talked this to him too. about Price Out of Paradise. You know what I mean? Yeah, and his and, thoughts um, on it. Right, and and Alan was like, yes, I understand it's happening. Um, it definitely is. How, prices are crazy here, right? Yeah. But he's always been thought taught that if you have like a roadblock in front of you, mm -hmm. you, you can try and find ways around it. Like you try to do anything to get around this roadblock, but if every angle is blocked, you gotta learn how to go through it yeah play you the have system to. It, other, everything else is just another way of avoiding it exactly yeah, yeah. you gotta break right through exactly. it exactly and and he and i and i think we understood that early on that it's like do we like what happened to hawaii and the people Fuck no, no of course not none of it's fair but how long have we been fighting how long has it not changed how much Are, progress have we made? How much mm -hmm. progress have we made? What can we do as a native Hawaiian, born and bred Kailua girl, to stay here and to thrive here mm -hmm. and work within the freaking system that exists right now to create change for ourselves, our kids, and our kids' kids, mm -hmm. and all of that? And that's the path we've chose. I'm not going to take this victim approach. I'm going to fucking trail straight through that thing. You know what I mean? Yep. And and so that's that's where we come from through yep. and through. And, and that's never going to change. And that's how I hope to empower other local people that like don't turn off that noise and tune into this because this is really what can create and cultivate true change and empowerment in your life. That's, that's not changing you're not gonna flip a whole state on its head, let alone country on its head. Yeah. But you can do X, Y, and Z right now and watch your whole life change. But you, but you check, you right, and For you're real. helping your family, but you, you can also then pass that on to your community as well. Yeah. To mm -hmm. your, the people that you know that you care about the most, right. that you wanna impact the most, right. Right? right? When you gain that, you give it away. Exactly. And I think- That, that is the, the, the definition of wealth, right? Yes. Exactly, yes. exactly, and I think, in the end, the only way shit is it ever gonna change 
is if you can change it from a position of power. And how I am do you not, do that? I am not going to be able to sit. I can, I can, I can sit back here in my, just, just trying to, to say everything's wrong with the system. I don't agree with the system. We and, were wronged. It needs to change. Yeah. Right. Or I can do something to where now I am powerful enough to actually come together and enact yeah. some real and change. Like, how do we you get, I mean? how do we keep Hawaiian lands in Hawaiian hands? We freaking buy it and you control it. And then you ha are, are in a position of power and empowerment to make a choice on who you sell that house to and what you do with that. You know, that's what the other countries are doing, right? So in, in the real estate industry, there a couple of years ago, there was an influx of international buyers. Japan, at one time specifically, the country was giving huge tax incentives for them to buy properties here in Hawaii, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and they were coming on the market, they were they were overbidding $100,000 over something, throwing off the prices and the comps. Yeah, And it really is because it was more beneficial for them Good to down. spend another 100,000, take the tax credit in Japan, yeah. and now little do you know, part of Hawaii is owned by Japan. Exactly. It's crazy. And then yeah. the other part is owned by China. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's yeah. how you take over a country now yeah. is, you buy it legally. Oh, exactly. Yeah. You know, like so if we don't though, do it, other people are going to do somebody it. Somebody else's. Exactly. And like, imagine though, if there were like a thousand other Tristan and Kamohais just buying up land. Yep. What do you think change would be created, even just a little bit? Then you know what I mean. So, yeah, that's the first time I've talked about that. That. Oh, yeah. There was some dark, dark nights there. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a feeling. I saw that, you know, and and I did. I got defensive at first. And then, I, you know, I've he's he's uh, become an influencer, oh, yeah. right? Um, but on a different side of a community. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And at first I was going to respond in defense. I almost shared it because I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Oh, wait. No, maybe it's coming off kind of negative. And I didn't share it. I was yeah. like, because these guys are my friends. Right. And then I'm understanding where he's coming from. Yeah. And he's, he's still a lot to learn. Maybe. Oh, 100%. You know, yeah. so. The, the and I don't think his intention was wrong. No. Was no. And he explained that too. Yeah. There's some, and I, but I was very clear that there's some things that you could have said differently mm -hmm. to not make something offensive. There's a way to come across where you're not. Why are we even in the name calling and stuff like that? But that's what that's what social media wants. That's what it I wants. Know. That's the engagement. That's I what know. it is. But I think what he's going to understand and learn, if he truly is moving in the direction that he is, right? His social media platform has changed a lot And he talks about recently. a lot of important things. Yeah. 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 He's all about does. change and, yeah. and totally. policy. And, yeah. yeah. Which is, is good. Is how you do something matters. Yeah. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. How you do something matters. And I think that that's really critical. Um, I remember having these conversations with him where that was the first time ever in my entire life that I felt not good enough to live in Hawaii. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. It made me feel that way. I've never had the color of my skin even talked about. Born and raised here, know nothing else. I mean, she's not Holly, she's Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually Filipino, everybody. But. And generations, her family's been here. And, and yeah. It, yeah. it's Then I was like, holy shit. Like, why is this even a subject matter? And then I have, I have Hawaiian babies. Yeah. They are my color skin. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh my God, are my babies going to feel like this? Then, like, that's not okay. There's a big divide, I think, with the the intention and the purpose that Hawaiians are fighting for. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them are just angry, right? Of course. I agree. Yeah. And I so, without having a clear target to aim that anger at, it's just, it, it's just whoever's yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. Whatever right. triggers at that yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then you and then you bring real estate into it, which we talked about earlier. Right. So even more is, so yeah. it, right. you kind of yeah. like yeah. fall into that stereotype. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's, yeah. it's, it's and stereotype then I even, from the get. He and I even had the conversation where I'm like, I wonder if that was your face on there. And you said those exact same words, but you're a male with brown skin what the reaction would have been if it would have been the same. 
Right. Well, it almost could have been because he was on the same podcast. Same podcast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah. only, a, only a, a portion of that was taken out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. I know. Totally. So it, it's just... All of that, I think, just needs to be remembered when it comes to social media, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, but we know this is a fundamental thing. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that I have the ability to communicate with local people about money and getting qualified for a home. And they'll take a lot of the information to heart better from me yep. yeah. than maybe somebody Than who's they would from me. In, in a suit, exactly. in, a, in a bank. like exactly. You know? Yeah, 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 so there's yeah. a difference of... Of how it's delivered, right? And, and like you said, how you do it. The messenger yeah. does right. matter. And I think that's important for influencers and teachers to remember too. Like, they're like, oh, this has already been taught or this has already been done. Yeah, but they, that person doesn't resonate with the previous person yeah. who taught it. They resonate with you. Yeah. So don't feel like, a, and it, I mean, even for us to remember, like, it doesn't. And matter. it's not an insult. Exactly. No, it, not it's at just all. human nature. Yeah. Like, that. They wanted, they, they're not in a space or a place to hear it from that person, but they will be from you. Yep. Yeah. So share your message. Share your message. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. And not everybody's going to be willing to hear it or, or receive it, but, mm-hmm. but that's okay. That's, that's okay. But there is somebody. Yes. That, yeah. Right. And, and I mean, it, it's easy to get scared off by negativity sometimes, right? And the people that maybe aren't necessarily willing or ready to hear it, but but also get loud about not wanting to hear it, right? Yeah. And it can come across negative and it can stunt people that have such good intentions to do things. It can be very things. hurtful. It can yeah. be yeah. so hurtful, You bro. know what's crazy, dude, just to bring it back is if like that uh, content was created a, back in like 2022 and I hadn't done a lot of the internal work, it probably would have took me out. But, mm. but it happened after I had done so much work on myself that I knew who I was, you know, cause like uh, people are so mean. Okay, yep. They're so mean. And if you don't know who you are and you're, you're still trying to figure that out, it'll make you fundamentally check yourself and then like fight, flight, freeze, or, or you'll literally stop doing what you set out to do which could be your God-given gift to do, yep. you know? So it's like, it goes back to our conversation of, of healing and doing the mindset work, doing the emotion set work, going into the whys and really digging deep and doing all that work so that when stuff like that happens, because if you're doing things right and you're being loud and it's you have happen. a, it's going to happen. It will yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's just a matter of time. The people are really mean on social media too, though. People like, yeah, are people actually get, mean on TikTok. They're on, on TikTok is horrible. Well, just digitally in general. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, they're so much braver, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's exactly. less consequences of saying it if you're not within a punch's reach. A hundred percent. I mean, because yeah. back in the day, you say something stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. You got exactly. punched in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. it's like everybody's got a camera and... You know, right. and a phone, like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. They're going to taunt you. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. So but I think that's also, like, as much as it hurts to also realize that, right? And and to to understand that people are going to be that way for these certain reasons because it's easy for them to be that way. And are these people writing that comment and, and even thinking about you after they do that? No. 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 So don't give them any more exactly. of your time. Exactly. And and it's not even worth a response, but it still hurts sometimes. I, to, to, to say that it didn't is, is you're a human being. I'm not a robot. I had a feeling. People, are, yeah. people yeah. have feelings and, and words matter, but I think that's also something to remember that it's a responsibility that comes along with this and we can always improve how we say things. We can always try and get our message clearer, Mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So it's always a multifaceted viewing things from all kinds of perspectives and not reacting. Not reacting is huge because I could have went off you know the what initial I mean? reaction, like initial reaction, yeah. like yeah. let me tell you, boy. Yeah, I've been here like longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, my my babies are probably more Hawaiian than you. Blah blah blah. Yeah. All this stuff. You, you know? the same skin tone as me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? like, but not coming from that place yeah, yeah, and yeah. like pausing yeah. and really being like, okay, well, feel feel how you feel, process that, go back to your roots, and then respond. Don't react or choose not to respond at all. Yeah, don't give it. What do you guys do for mental health? Do you guys have a therapist? Do you guys? I go to a life coach. I see, I was probably supposed to be here this morning, but I had to reschedule that. But every week, I try to check in with her. (laughs) I go to a life coach. 
Um, we both do. Yeah. Um, I'm the same, same. He's an avid runner. That's I run. a part of his that's mental what, health. That's literally my... I know, I'd see you running yeah. in the morning. I have to. Like I, I'll, I run four miles a day. If I don't run, I'm depressed. So yeah, literally, literally, <laughs> it's, part of my, it's yeah, mental it's health part of my, yeah. for me. It's like, more just moving my body. I'm not a runner, but it, whether it's weights, whether it's walking on the treadmill, whether it's stretching and doing yoga, I think that's really important for me. Um, I figured out how much I do need pickleball in my life. <laughs> Have you ever played pickleball? Of course you did. Pickleball like I, so you need. I it. am a pickleballologist. Okay, oh, well, nah, 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 nah. we have a we cold have a sack court. right here. We can um, set up the net. I've been, I've been playfully saying, you need a partner. I know, I've seen it. No, I, I want to play. Happen. I want to play. Um, I think it's just moving your body. We've just, uh, so my company, um, my office just rented out uh, Beyond Ball Hawaii. Oh, really? Have you, are no, you familiar never with been. it? No, So it's in Kapaakoi Road. Yeah. Um, it's it's a court that they have basketball, whatever, but there's three pickleball courts, indoor courts, and we rent it out and we're teaching, um, we do it as a networking event for realtors. Mm. So we bring our realtors in and then we yeah. play pickleball with them. That is so oh, cool. fun. Um, I ha and I have a trainer. We need to do a Jills to... and Aloha like pickleball thing. That's Where they just come yeah. over and just people just have fun that this, isn't talking this past about real weekend, estate. We, um, had, in the we cul de sac. Yeah. In the cul -de -sac. Oh, that's so cool. It works. We, yeah. we have this. Um, no, can we can draw the lines out. It's a. It's basically a. Um, what is it called? What? That what? we laid out. Oh, it's just a, the net that mimics the actual lines of a yeah. pickleball court. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. can trace it. And then you can it, trace the lines. Or you can secure it to the ground. And then put up our net and just play it out there. See, even that, like on that, that fundraiser that I was talking about, you can do something like that, like a pickleball tournament. or Yeah, yeah that would be yeah. so fun. Everybody knows pickleball now. So. Yeah, everybody does. But I mean, those are just some of the things. I just think it always goes back to, for me, it's laughing. I gotta laugh, dude. Yeah. I got to. Whether it's TV, whether it's him, whether it's <laughs> doesn't matter. Like you have to laugh. Um, it's good medicine. Music. Yeah. Music, music is so therapeutic and powerful me for me. Um, so music, uh, journaling, like all the things. And and I think it's important that for mental health, it's different for everybody. But what you put in is what you get out. Yeah. So whatever you're putting into your system. Uh, mentally, emotionally, and that's exactly what you're gonna get out. And listening to your body, your body never lies to you. Nope, it, I, I've had to, to learn how to dial in on that and, mm -hmm. and listen, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, weightlifting was always a thing that I was really like heavy into. I wanted to yeah. uh, compete at, in bodybuilding at one point, but you know, it, getting back to that, like finding out what the balance is of work of health of yeah. the, the mental and emotional you know strengthening those areas too totally is, yeah yeah i mean that's a whole nother piece to the the mentorship equation as well right because i think it is very easy to focus on the money making things yeah. right like we've been talking about this whole time but thinking it's going to be the band-aid the the fix all for uh, all of our problems the money making stuff is so 100%. critical well it is but then but. also the doing the work on yourself and understanding unloading all that baggage but also the physical side yeah. of mm. things it has mm. to be holistic it has to be your physical body and your health um you got to start working on that from the beginning yeah because you're gonna be you know multi multi-millionaire but overweight and unhealthy you can't high blood pressure money. diabetes yeah heart For attack what? you're still not gonna be happy you're yeah. not gonna be able to enjoy it yeah. and you're not gonna be able to to give it away yeah. in the way that you're meant to 100 mm -hmm. you have the potential to yeah well and i also think that there's just in our industry in general real estate hustle culture is just thrown down your throat yep. it's like success at all costs it's um just grind through it like you know yep. and ultimately grit it out just work hard just work it. hard yeah, work make sacrifices yeah. get up at three get up before everybody else go to sleep yeah. after everybody exactly. else exactly. Yeah. yeah that's what's praised that's what is mainstream and what people think they have to do sometimes yes but just in the beginning yeah but that's the thing it's like you have to know your season that you're in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, he and I still bust our ass sometimes, but there is also, we have two children right now and they need our time and knowing when to shut it off 
and building your business around your life. Yeah, not your other way around. Yeah. Not your Most life people around do it the other your way business. Around, right? Those are non-negotiables. Those should be in there no matter what. Exactly. The business fits into everything. And else. that's why we've yeah. had a lot of people like, "Oh, can you guys do the meetups on the weekends?" And I'm like, "No, those are my yeah. kids' times. That's my time off. Yeah. My meetups are here between this time and this time." Because or my, like even meetups in, at night, we can't do. It. Like we, it's hard you, for us to. Do. Why do you think deals on Aloha is? is in the daytime <laughs> on a weekday. Between 10 it's, and 12. Be, we purposely do that. Because you know my what kids I mean? are at because school. Because my kids are at school. It's work time. It's hard to go to meetups at nighttime. That's it's why hard you to don't go to see us at many weekend. of them, it, right? Yeah. You'll see us at every every once in a while. You'll see us at a weekend one or at a night one. But that I'm at home with my kids. Yeah. We already work enough, you know, and I'm, we're not going to get these years back. No. I, and our kids aren't either. They're only going to be these. This age is like so important for them. Oh my you know god! What I mean? yeah, I and so yeah, yeah, I, you know. So that's that. That's another thing that's really important to us. That needs to be like enough with the hustle culture, or just have a strong mindset and everything goes away. No, you have to be emotionally regulated. You can't bulldoze your emotions with having strong, powerful thoughts. No, you know, like they yeah. all have to be connected. Yeah, you gotta learn how to be hard and soft. You gotta, like, it, it is all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so last thing. Um, what are three things that you guys are grateful for? Individually. Mm. Mm. You going first? I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. The two, I'll think of the third one. There's so many things that I'm grateful for, but the main ones are him. I'm going to get emotional. I'm not going to cry. Because, oh man, you're just the partner that is perfectly matched for me in every single way. We couldn't achieve anything that we've achieved personally. When I was doing the nonprofit, you were like that backbone, right? And then even together, I couldn't do this alone. I couldn't even imagine doing this alone. Like a shout out to all the solopreneurs out there because no way. Um, you're everything that I'm not in all aspects. So it's like, I'm beyond grateful for you in my life. You're just that perfect. You're my person. And then my, my family, my parents, they have taught me how to be strong, but also soft and while they drive me crazy at times because they can be overbearing and opinionated, I wouldn't have it any other way because they love so hard mm -hmm. and they are always there when I need them. Like my mom has our kids right now. You know what I mean? And if we didn't have that, we also couldn't be doing what we're doing. Yeah. Um, thank so you, mom. Yeah. Thank you, mom. Um, so those are two things. And then I think just being grateful that we're even in a position to have the opportunities that we have because it's very easy to feel just the stress of the opportunity mm -hmm. and lose sight that you we, get to you get to yep mm -hmm. you get to wake up and make that decision every single day yep. you know what i mean and so i think that always has to be at the forefront is like oh my god i prayed for this life Thank you so much that I even have that family to help and I get to raise that money and I get to fix that house and I get to make that hard decision. Staying there, I think, is is critical. Yeah. Your turn. Well said. Yeah, very, very similar. I, I mean, know. You're I was tearing up for you. Kind of, <laughs> I, really, kind of, I, know, I really try not to cry. <laughs> they all kind of fall into that. I mean, obviously, my my family. But I think the biggest thing that I'm grateful for is, besides my wife, obviously, because she knows she literally saved my life. Mm -hmm. And I've told her that many, many times, is the experiences that I've had. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful and most people would look at like those things and think they were the shittiest mm -hmm, times mm -hmm. in my life and you know what they they probably were at some point but now that I'm looking back when I look back at those things I am so grateful that I went you've through said that a lot yeah. every single one of those I think they make me who I am today but they also give me perspective and I think perspective is 
probably one of the most important things to have in life in general. And it can be your biggest help or hurt, you know? Um, But whenever anything gets super freaking hard Mm. right now in, in, in our business, in our lives, I can look back on like some very specific experiences and very quickly snap out of, of anything or break through any kind of challenge because I remember what it was like yeah. or, or how challenge. there's nothing worse than that. You know what I mean? Um, and so it helps me to stay grateful for the littlest things yeah. like just being outside or free. You know what I mean? And so um, I think that paired with my family mm-hmm. um, and then finding Tris. Because I, I, do, I do realize that there, are, are, there were forks in my life, experiences in my life that just the, the smallest decision totally changed the trajectory. Like, like I can go back to little periods and be like, if I didn't do that then, mm-hmm. I would potentially be dead right now, mm-hmm. dead or locked up. You know what I mean? And I think that, um, you know, the choice, that one choice that I made, I can, I can think back to that. Another choice is when, I, when we got married, when I fully committed to Tris because who the fuck knows where I would be if I didn't. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm, and God, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think, um, and I know that's for, for you too, but I think they all, it all follows, it all falls under the um, umbrella of what we're both talking about, yeah. right? Is the, the positions that he has placed us in to affect so many lives. Yeah, to do the work. To do the work. You know what I mean? And, and, and that is something so special that I, because this is the thing I look at, I look at my dad and my dad is so well respected Mm -hmm. and uh, he's done so much for Hawaii and our community. And I've always said that, that I like, if I'm half the man my dad is, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Yep. You know what I mean? And I have had big shoes to fill, you know? And now I realize, and my dad has told me this too. It's so funny. He'll, he'll say this. He'll say, I used to be, wait, how does he say it? You got to tell me how he says it. He says it like, um, I used to be, you know. Oh, no. I used, I used to, to be. be you used to be just his son. Oh yeah, I used to be Corbett's son. Son, that's yeah. that's how everybody would but would now, refer to it. But now it's re- he's being Kamohai. he's Kamohai's father. He's, he's Kamohai's, Kamohai's dad. dad. Yeah, he's Kamohai's dad. Oh my god, I totally understand that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. There's a difference of perspective there. It's yes. a difference yeah. of perspective. Where's the shadow casting? Yeah, exactly. Yes. exactly. Yeah. And so it's. It's and he we've sat down and talked about it because it's been a big change for him too and for you and for me yeah. like yeah. like because I've always he has a big shoes to fill yeah no you don't you have your own shoes Ex- that's exactly. the thing but that, yeah. those are all things that I tell myself in exactly. perspective right exactly I mean come on you like shoes I, do. <laughs> I love shoes he gets it from his father too yeah. no but there is there is that that perspective of it. I have a similar because. Your dad works, he's, um, what is he at locations, a VP? He's a CEO. CEO. Yeah. So I started my real estate career at locations. My mom's a partner there. Mm. Yeah. And I was always known as Susan's son. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So there is, there was that shadow cast. Yeah. Like, 100%. Yeah. And I felt like I had to fill that role of like, okay, well, his mom does so well. Like, mm-hmm. where is he? How come yeah. he's, you know, he has to be on par mm-hmm. with that level. There's an yep. expectation there, but. Yep. Now that you're talking about that, I felt that in the nonprofit sector because my mom was very established. Oh yeah. That, you know? Yeah. Big time. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I never thought about it till right now. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, I think. Yeah, you're paving your own path. I love that you <laughs> asked the, the grateful question. I think having that perspective and consciously having to think about that and talk about those things 
is one of the most important things. Like you hear people say it like every day they wake up and they talk about, think about, or write down three, yeah. four, Gratitude. five things yeah. you're grateful for. I think that's. I think that the emphasis there, it's an, it's undervalued how much impact it actually has though. Yeah. Well, it goes the, back to the words the that person. you say to yourself. Right. Right. And, and Alan Akina spoke about that. In the, but his perspective on your podcast of what he said, I'm like, it boils all the way down to ambient noise too. Yes. The ambient noise yes. whispers yes. good or bad. Yes. Yeah, totally. And so I was like, shit, yeah. he's right. It's so powerful. So important yeah. Yeah. and powerful. I know, yeah. it's crazy. Well. well, I appreciate you guys so much. I look forward to having more conversations. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah this it was will, fun. Sure. Yeah. This is a lot. Sorry it took so long, but this is this has been really fun. It was well yeah, worth it. Awesome. Thank you for having us on. Appreciate not giving it, up bro. on us. No, I, I told you earlier. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I told I always tell people, especially because most people will give up. They give up. And they give up right before the most special so thing true. is going to happen. They missed the so magic. True. Exactly. But it's in, it's in life in general. Like I'm telling you, people do this all the time in, in real estate, in relationships, in, in everything. You can't ever give up. The, the people that you are meant to be with, if you just stop, stop trying. Yeah. Dude, you, you, you're you're gonna miss out on the biggest Dude, opportunities it's, ever. It's so true, and like our example is one that can be used because our first flip fail, second flip fail, third flip we actually made some money and, and figured it out. Imagine if we gave up on our second flip. Yep. We wouldn't even be sitting on this couch. Yeah. No. Nope. You know yeah. what I mean? So like, we're a prime example of that. So, don't give up. <laughs> Um, and I, so that, that last meetup that in pro city, yeah, I totally forgot. I saw you doing the live and I jumped in my car and I drove down. I was having a shitty day. Oh, no really? way. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? This is my answer to get out of the house. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I came down there and it wasn't even to talk to you guys about this. It was just like, it was, you just have, be there. It was I yeah. need to get around the energy. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. You're like, we're going to be here f until yeah. one o'clock and we've got to kick you guys out. Right. I said, you know what? I'm going to take 20 minutes to get there. That gives me an hour. Yeah. yeah. I can talk story. That's perfect. Right. I'm there. Yeah. And so how it, it flipped, something flipped, right? For you. Like mm -hmm. you left well, there And then we scheduled better. this freaking thing there. Well, yeah. Like how crazy is that? Yeah, that's crazy. No, but everything happens for a reason. And I think a lot of the times you do the action first and then the feelings follow. If we allowed our feelings to constantly dictate everything, I feel like we would just be walking zombies and nobody would achieve anything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like you literally have to just go do and then the feeling follows. Yeah. You're never going to feel motivated all the time. You're yeah. never going to feel. That's the discipline of it. Yeah. 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 But it's, but it's, it's knowing that, right? Like it, you have to know that sometimes. And do you're it in anyway. Something, yeah. Do but, it anyway. Okay, I'm gonna go take yeah. that action. I'm gonna go out there. Yeah. This is the change. This is powerful. what I need yeah. right now, yeah, which is super awesome. Super powerful. It, yeah. It totally was, and I'll, I'll let you know a little secret. I, you mentioned, you know what? March is a good month. And then I'm over here. I was like, okay, I talked to mom. I'm going to go talk to dad, make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he's like, okay, let's schedule it. What day? I said March 14th. I said because if there's any day in March. That's got to be the one they cannot say no That's to. Like a random day, yeah. yeah. Well, it's today's my forty fifth birthday. What? Uh, no way! Happy birthday, you know bro! Said, oh my god! You know happy what? Birthday. I kind of got a, I kind of got an inkling because your mom called you and you were telling your mom thank you, and yeah. I was like, oh, hey, yeah. it has to be so really? yeah. something has to be happening today. Yeah, yeah. That's and, so and it cool. was it was just like. You know, a couple of friends know yeah. that I'm here, um, yeah. and, and and not everybody knows it's my birthday. But I was just like, he's like, "What day?" I said, "The 14th." And then everybody's like, "What are you doing? Working on your birthday?" I said, "That's not work. I mean, I get to do this." Yeah. Oh, that's like, so cool! Aww, yeah, happy yeah, birthday! Happy birthday, dude! Thank you. And we were like, "Yep, okay, let's make it happen." 14th. It yeah. Just, and then you checked in, and yeah. we're like, "Yep, 14th, yep. still good." Yep. If it's still. on the calendar, yeah. Unless it's my something happens with my kids, like it's uh, gonna it's happen. Awesome. Yeah. 45. 45. Right. They say that 40s are the best years. I'm still trying to teach him that. It 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 actually is. I, I mean, you I know? know I know it is, but I'm still trying to get used to being in the 40s. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, you never get used to that. <laughs> exactly. You never. Yeah, get used yeah, to yeah that's that's not the number that you want. You know why? Because I I look I think back uh, to when I was a kid growing up, and I remember my dad's 40th birthday, 
And I can still see myself as a kid being like, oh my gosh, man. That's that old. So old. So old. That's so old, yeah. Yeah, so old. But it's, it's different now. now. The 40s is the new 30s. Oh yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm living in a 42-year-old body. I'm like, dude, I still, I do not feel old. You no. know what I mean? Like, no. I'm, But that's because I'm you're still using right it. Now. Yeah. You're yeah. still using right. it, yeah. 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 So, that's funny. <laughs>